Fuck Dana. Fuck Dana White. Fuck Dana. Fuck Dana White. Fuck Dana. Fuck Dana White. You're late and you should be grateful. There's no being late. I set my own hours. Actually, no, this is the one, this is the one stream I put a hard time on and I was late. So I, I'll give you this one, actually. I'll give you this one. I do need to put out the notification for that because I'm going to say on the second channel. Doing the daddy dating, the daddy dating simulator stream, guys. Come on. I told, I told you I'd give you it. I told you I'd give you it. Fuck Dana. Fuck Dana White. Fuck Dana. I'm now doing that daddy dating simulator stream. Come hang. I need a hot spring trap picture to put on. I finally can catch a stream of yours. Welcome. Spring trap gosling. This one will do. Fuck Dana. Fuck. That song's been stuck in my head. If you guys don't know what I'm like mindlessly chorusing, it's Jake Paul's diss track to Dana White. I thought it was 30 minutes late. Just turns out I didn't know time zones. No, no, no. It was 30 minutes late. You weren't 30 minutes late. I was 30 minutes late. Don't worry. This one's on me. Not making a great first impression, am I? Please read the fanfic. The daddy simulator comes first, guys. Goofy name. My name's my name, man. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing good. I think we got a big one for today. We're planning to finish the Dream Daddy uh storyline that we did i i think we're like halfway through ish or like a third of the way i'll probably speed through some dialogue because i'm like pretty acquainted with how things go like i won't be reading every last thing this time thanks for the sub snails 34 appreciate it we can simulate daddy dating right now without having to play any games wink wink well i'm playing the game for content reasons so that's not really an option for me damn chat's flying holy fuck Second stream, at, dude, I was like putting on deodorant earlier today. And by earlier today, I mean like five minutes ago before stream. And like, I was using this new deodorant that's supposed to be more effective. But the mechanism with which you apply it is so complex. I Like, I, 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 I used too much. And it like was making my pits as wet as they would have been if I had just like sweated normally. Because the application is so strange. That jump in viewers? It hasn't showed up yet. It hasn't showed up for me yet. Boss man, you are in fact popping off. Let's go. 600 viewers? Yeah, I imagine it's like the notification on YouTube. I just put it out. I usually don't notify people that I'm streaming. Unless it's like a big one that I announced ahead of time. So here we are. The twisting ones? No, no, no. That's like the standard one. My streamer does hygiene. I was modifying my hygiene. Like, I usually, like, put on deodorant, like, because I'm a fucking functioning human being. And on honestly, man, like, I don't like having sweaty pits. It's uncomfortable. Like, if, if I can do this tiny thing to make my quality of life go up like a modicum, I'm taking it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So many first-timers, right? You never forget your first time, especially on a quite stream. Nothing quite like your first time on a quite stream. It's a life-changing experience, usually for the worse. Hi, everybody coming from YouTube for the first time. You are now officially cool. Took you long enough. <laughs> Thanks for the sub, Lesbian Gloss. Hope you're having a good one. God, I gotta uh, buy a subscription, but I still didn't get a card and am pissed. 
Well, uh, pray that someone gifts like 400 so the whole chat gets them. That'd be nice if someone did that, but we'd have notifications going for days. You are now finally not a loser. Finally not a loser. Finally not a loser. Holy shit. Why Nixon? I haven't done the Nixon bit on stream in quite a while. Someone gift 400 subs, nice. I, hey, I mean, unpopular opinions gifted out one, or Nakati Emperor gave out one, I mean. Wait, 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 wait. No, unpopular opinions gifted one. The Emperor person prime sub. Thank you both. Thank you both. Yeah, you're finally worth something. Good job. Quite, why are you so hot? It's just, it's good genetics. Can't help it. All right, I don't want to stall too long because the folks who are joining here for the first time, I, uh, I, want, I, want to get, I want to keep them abreast of what's happening. Today we're planning on finishing the run of Dream Daddy we started in the last stream. I think it was like last week. It might have been last Monday, honestly. But um, last Monday or last Sunday, something like that. Uh, and the plan is to finish it tonight, make a video out of it, pop off all that gay shit. You guys know the drill. Thanks for the uh, sub LED lights. Appreciate it. Damn. Oh, shit. A lot of gift subs. Thank you for those, Jillian Advalanche. Appreciate it, as always. Very kind of you. I miss Bobby, I miss Bobby Schmurda on the side of the screen more every day. Damn, you're a long-time viewer then, if you remember that. Man, there's too many subs coming in to keep track. So um, I'm going to just say thank you in advance to anybody who does until like the flood of notifications comes through. Because I don't know if I can read off everyone with them going this fast. Oh yeah, guys, look, it's me in the, uh, I should, I don't have a button for it yet, but this is me in the, um, Bin Laden kill room. Pretty nice, right? Pretty sweet digs, I think. Pretty sweet digs. This is scary as hell, so I'm told. <laughs> fuck Dana, fuck Dana White. Damn, level 5 hype drain already, that's crazy, thank you. Agreed. Can we please go to the car? Ugh, fine. You guys never like what I do, though. You guys never like what I like. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna just boot up Dream Daddy. I feel like we've I feel like we've been hanging enough, hanging in the lobby long enough. Time to blow my vocal cords out. We are definitely gonna have to um, balance the audio on this. Dad Rector's Cut. Alright, I know it's not on screen. Give me a second. I'm still booting up everything. Alright, here we go. Gamer Hour. Amanda and I arrive home. Any big plans for this evening? Actually, yeah. I'm going out with some friends. Oh. Mm. Is that okay? Of course. Just keep me posted and be home before midnight. Mm. You got it. Usually teens fight you more on that. Like, they're like, at least let me stay out to one or two. Come on, dad. Thanks for the sub, lads. Appreciate it. Fuck, you guys went above and beyond today. I will. You guys can't even see the words because they're all on the left side. Can I, should I move my VTuber for this? I'm trying to find a good spot that like won't block the text, but also doesn't look like absolute dog shit. I don't think there is one. You're just going to have to deal with it. Hmm. Of course. And call me if you need anything. Oh. Dad, you're not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No, I've never done that, and I will never do that. Hmm. I don't care about you enough. Okay, do you have plans tonight? I, uh... My plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. Bottom right? Dude, I, the G Fuel the G fuel command's right there. What are you... Are you crazy? You think I can just move the G Fuel? God, what's wrong with you? What were you thinking? Unbelievable. Heresy. I can't believe you'd even suggest that. That's so dumb. That was such a stupid suggestion of you. Never suggest that again. N never suggest that again. There we go. <laughs> I'm gonna... work on some stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna work on stuff. You know, dad stuff. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Yeah. Great. See you later. 
I watch Amanda drive off into the night. I forget she's old enough to drive. I really do hope she has fun. I plop in front of the TV, turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. It's it's actually me watching t watching Gordon Ramsay shows on Twitch. I love to be able to cook like that. Although if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil. Like I just making baked Alaskas all day. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time as I bla through, bla bla blaze through several episodes. I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. Hey kiddo, you good? I wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home now, in which case, I hope she doesn't respond soon, because I definitely taught her better than to text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab ice cream. Why? What is it with the self-insert in this in this series and liking ice cream so damn much? It's a little late for this, but I think it earned it after a long day of socializing. Check my watch again, and then my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. She's definitely in a car crash. My daughter's dead. Well, okay, see, now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no, it's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes. Now I'm really worried. The episodes of Gavin Chapman's Meet Hell are not only assuaging my anxiety, but hot posture only not assuaging my anxiety, but possibly exacerbating it with all the yelling, so I keep pacing around the house waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who is she even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I even know any of her friends' full names? Who is Emma P? <laughs> P. Send another text. Please text me. I can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened. Oh, thank God. It's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally. Finally, she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. Sup? Sweetie, thank God you're safe. <sighs> Ugh, yep. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my texts? Amanda pulls her phone out of her oh. pocket. Oh, whoops. Guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk to her room. Amanda Ann. Hmm. Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now. Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew and you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Hmm. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I have a right to be concerned. I mean, I was scared. You weren't responding. It was just, it was just like when you're, oh, damn. I have to stop myself from tearing up. Yeah, let's go. Grief baiting. I'm a guilt trip this bitch. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, dad. I didn't mean to. I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just please don't do that again. <laughs> I'd be emotionally manipulating my kids and shit, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> Alright, I'm gonna go to bed now. Ah. Amanda closes the door. Jeez, as I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not gonna be like this when I go off to school, are you? I admit, definitely didn't sleep well. I made eggs and coffee. Uh. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey. Uh. I thought about what you said last night. Hmm. I should have texted you. I said I was going to do it and I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think about it. Uh. I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do it again. That's my daughter. Successfully, successfully emotionally manipulated. Let's go. Well, I'm sorry for freaking out on you. You're an adult now. I shouldn't have gotten so worked up. Hmm. Team quote. Yes, it's my last name. Team quote. Amanda gives me a hug. That was a happy ending. Want some yeah. eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them. Already did. Bless you. Amanda scarfs down the eggs in the time it takes me to wash the pan. All right, off to school. Does it smell you later is a really underrated phrase. I gotta tell you. I, I wish more people took cues from Gary O, cause that shit goes hard as hell. Wait, one more thing. Hmm. What? What's dad book? Ugh. It's a social media platform. Wait. Hmm? What? What's a social media platform? I, you can't be this fucking bad at this, man. God damn it. What's this game about? Dating men. Like big, strong, sometimes large, bearish men. <laughs> dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda. I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad book profile on my own. <laughs> All right, I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. <sighs> Amanda spends the couple next minutes. Couldn't this have waited till like after school? I don't know, I feel like this is irresponsible parenting.
Thanks for the sub, Miller Lemons. Aww. All right, Pops, we gotta fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. Fuck. On a Friday night, you are most likely to... Funk. Polish and sort my coin collection. Fall asleep watching the History Channel. Torment my... Netflix and grill, baby. Polish and sort my coin collection. Fuck, I am not much like a father at all, according to this. Torment children? I mean, that's probably the most accurate. Yeah, get it? It's like Friday Night Funkin'. That's like the game I play way too fucking much on this stream. Guys, do you get it? Do you get it? Holy fuck, I'm so goddamn funny. That was kind of a dad pun. I'll go for- I'll just go for that. If you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, desert island, what would it be? Trusty Grill. Cast away on DVD for instructional purposes. There's no TV. I don't need anything. A boat, obviously, smart. What are your turn-ons? What? Strong dad arms, tennis shoes with long white socks, a well-manicured lawn, street smarts, comfortable with dad, strong dad arms. Come on. I'm trying to be held, you know what I'm saying? What did you want to be when you grow up? Uh, not poor. A good father. President of space. Technical writer for manuals and instructionals. Huh. Uh, mm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, a good father. What's your favorite movie genre? Sean Connery's entire filmography. Uh, anything on Laserdisc? This is a... Uh, this is a... Uh, sneak peek at the song. What's your ideal date? Eating a healthy dinner at 4 p.m.? Okay, like, I fuck with a healthy dinner, like a salad. You know, like a chicken salad, or like a tenderloin salad. Like, that sounds good. But fucking... Fucking... At 4 p.m.? No. Trying to geocache, but getting hopelessly lost. Yeah, that seems fun. What do you never leave home without? A sensible cardigan? My sick vape? Fuck no. My wor my book of word jumbles and a pen. A cool knife? Um, I feel like the book of word jumbles is close because I, like, write a bunch of shit on my phone when I'm out. But, like, I don't use a- I don't use a pen. I use finger. Fingy. I spend a lot of time thinking about... Conspiracy theories. How proud I am of my child. Potential ends of the world. If I'll ever be able to love myself as much as I love my grill. Uh, when I can get a next cup of coffee. This is gonna sound like a plug, but there will be times when I, like, finish my G Fuel in the morning, and, like, I try to only have one a day, and it'll be a few hours on, and I'm like, hmm, kinda wanna, kinda wanna make another one. <laughs> Profile complete. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kinda fun. I could totally spend all day on here just looking at people's profiles. Yes. Yeah, it stands for gay field. You should message one of them, or more than one of them. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay, I promise I'll make some friends. Yeah. Amanda gives me a hug. Go get him, dad. Welcome. You've got dads. You're not a dad. Dad Manda. <laughs> Hi, Quite. It's me, your dear old friend from way back in the day. Dad Manda. I'm delighted to see you've signed up for Dadbook. They've recently added this exciting new messenger service, so you may find yourself receiving messages from other dads like myself. Take care not to miss it. Uh, I'm definitely messaging Craig first. I think he's like my number one suitor at the moment. Uh, dad of three, business entrepreneur, and a fitness enthusiast. By entrepreneur, do you think he's like an NFT, bro? That would be major boner killer. Juggling work, family, and fitness is a tough gig, but someone's gotta do it. Get one last cardio session in, a box of energy bars, a sub-minute, six-minute mile? Fuck! How the fuck did I- that's so- ugh. Ideal date. Scaling a huge, dangerous mountain for fun. Good grief. Avid music enthusiast. Passionate coffee drinker. You can find me most days selling bean juice over at the Coffee Spoon. Or hanging out the park with my daughter. Hit me up about 80s no-wave music. I I'm, I'm not gonna look at all of these because I'm not interested in all of them. Like, fucking Joseph has four kids, none of which I will ever want to be around. Uh... I'm, cu I'm curious what Damien says, because he's like a cult leader. How do you do? I have finally decided to join this information superhighway. I'm not entirely sure how this works, but I will try my best to understand. I, have long st I love long strolls through graveyards and spending time with my son. If you would ever like to chat about the latest- Yeah, I don't care. This guy's fucking Dale as hell. Brian? Spend most of my days hanging out with my daughter. Yes, you and everybody else on this fucking website, dude. Alright, yeah, Craig it is. Let's go.
I wonder what Craig's up to today. I navigate to Craig's dad book page and type out a message. Hey bro, or should I say neighbor? Let's catch up, like old times. A couple minutes pass before I hear a ding on my computer. Bro, my man, let's definitely hang soon. Might be a little different from our old weekend long benders, but it still should be fun. We exchange a couple messages and he logs off to prep for the game. Quite you type really fast? Yeah, dude, my, do my words per minute is great, considering that I am apparently internet illiterate. I should see if Amanda wants to join me. I walk over to Amanda's room and forget she's at school. Ah. I open the door and find Amanda sitting cross-legged on the floor, surrounded by magazines and newspaper clippings. She seems to be making some sort of art piece. I can't tell if she's been crying or just has, like, eye bags. Her eyes are a little puffy, almost as if she- Okay, thanks, thanks in-game dialogue. Hey, are you alright? <laughs> oh fine. yeah, I'm fine! <laughs> I just got sad because I realized that dogs are too often killed in movies to elicit emotional reactions from the audience instead of being given the respect that they deserve. <laughs> it's not right. Are you sure that's all you're upset about? If there's, you know, anything going on, I just want you to know that I'm here for you, and I'll always be here for you. Whether you need a shoulder to cry on or a strong dad to go kick on someone's butt, I'm only a phone call away. Thanks, Popsicle. I appreciate that. But I'm fine. Really. I don't... You're a fucking terrible liar, but whatever. What you working on? Just a collage for class? <laughs> the fucking eye bags just magically disappear. Like she just blinks them out of existence. We're supposed to make a piece that represents our goals for the future. I take a look at her collage. That's a lot of dogs. It's mostly dogs, yeah. Did you need something? Craig invited us to a softball game. Wanna go? Remember that one time you signed me up for softball and you bought all the gear and then you took me the first game and someone hit a ball at me and I ran off the field crying? And then you hid in the dugout and would scream if I tried to pick you up. Mm -hmm. I was afraid of baseballs. I thought you were a gigantic sentient softball. So does that mean you don't want to go? Amanda gets up and looks me dead in the eye, determined. Aww. I'm finally ready to face my fears head on. Let's do this. Amanda and I make the short drive. For a kid's softball game, it's packed. We clamber up the bleachers and take our seats on the top row. Uh. So one of the kids start crying and running off the field. You know that your relationship with softball is different from everyone else's relationship with softball, right? Oh yeah, I forgot that Craig coached the team. Coaches, current, present tense. Okay, but if I don't see some kids cry, I will be pretty disappointed. Mm. For nostalgia purposes, of course. For dis Oh. Definitely not that. The game starts, and the kids run out into the field. Hey look, it's his kid, strapped to his front like a bomb. I see Craig by the dugout with a clipboard. He's got rivers strapped to his chest, there's a guy in a pancake costume. I guess that's the mascot. Thanks for the sub, Solar. Reading the kids' brightly colored jerseys, I see the Maple Bay Flapjacks and the Pinewood Ocelots? I don't know. Choke up on the bat, Miranda. Ha! Yeah, Miranda, square up! That's a Kenny Beat song. Like a bomb? Yeah. He's got, like, a explosive vest on, like in Modern Warfare. How much you know about softball? Enough to know that balls are relatively hard, despite their name. Mm. But yelling is fun. Give it a shot. It's cathartic. Keep your eye on the ball. What's important? What are you willing to sacrifice to win? Leave it all out on the field, Miranda. If you want this, you're gonna have to bleed for it. Who I assume to be Miranda's father gives me a dirty look. I shoot it back, back at him. The attitude isn't gonna bring Miranda to D1. <laughs> Dad, please don't fight any other dads while we're out here. We watch a couple innings. They aren't ready for the major leagues, but he's... Craig did an okay job, I guess. Keg Stan Craig is good with children. Whoa. Ah. It's amazing how hard they're hitting the balls and how no one has run off the field crying yet. Amanda, dear, you have to let it go. Mm. Let what go? I'm perfectly fine. The opposing team is up at bat. They hit a fly ball out the center field. The tiny little girl tries to get under the ball, but it misses her glove and hits her straight hey. in the forehead. You know, this is a story that we've told on stream before, but I know a guy who, uh, killed someone by doing that. My, my friend Ryan threw a, pitched a baseball, and it hit a guy, in, a kid in such a way where it stopped his heart. That kid is dead now. I know someone who's killed a man before he was ten. Anyways, back to the game. Your friend is a serial murderer? As far as I know, it was only once. 
The girl plops down on the grass and starts crying. Craig makes a beeline to her, checking her forehead and comforting her until her parents arrive. He carries her off the field as she sobs. How do you just move on from that? Well, he's a fucking kid, and like, it wasn't really his fault. It's just very funny to like, poke him for it. <laughs> Are you sure the kid's dead? Yeah, there's a fucking newspaper clipping. <laughs> like the fucking, like, not to, you know, not to laugh about a kid's death, but. Man, it's strange to think about how this was the guy who once backflipped off a roof and into a pool while shotgunning a beer. He's so responsible now. The game resumes the... The game after the... <laughs> the game... The... Is Ryan single? No. He is not. Sorry. The game resumes after the girl calms down a bit and we catch a couple more innings. Craig's team is crushing the other team in the ninth inning. I batter on the other team, knocks a foul ball into the stands. I follow the trajectory and- Oh no, it's coming right for me. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. I close my eyes and brace for impact. I open my eyes and look over to see Amanda holding the softball, staring at it in amazement. I caught the ball. You saved me. I caught the ball, Dad. I caught the ball. You did it, Amanda. I faced my fears. I defeated the softball. I can do anything. I might be, you know, might be a- Bit of a jump, but I'm happy for you. I'm proud of you, kiddo. The game ends and Craig's team are declared the victors. We sit patiently as the girls line up to shake hands. Oh. Great job, everyone. Blah, blah, blah. I totally pretend to care about the people on my softball team. We walk over to the dugout to congratulate Craig, who's talking with some parents. Craig, great work, man. Thanks. We've been working hard all season, and it's great to see it paying off. I'm so proud of all the girls. Which, speaking of which, have you met Briar and Hazel? Those are his twins, right? Hello. Hey, killer playing out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys rule. Thank you. You guys are twins, huh? So which one of you is the evil one? Hazel. Yeah, it's me. Huh. Good looking out. I like these twins a lot more than I like uh, the fucking... Who, who is the handkerchief wearing one? Like the, the Wonder Bread looking guy? I hate his twins. He's off the books. Hmm. Do you guys ever pretend to be each other? I don't have a twin, but I think if I did, I'd be doing that constantly. You can tell she's evil because she's, like, not got her, like, shirt buttoned up. Yeah, I take all of her math tests. And I usually throw rocks at stuff, and when people get mad, I tell them I'm Briar. What? Oh. We will talk about this later. Hmm. Quite? Bro, I just got a couple more things to clean up, then we can hang. Sounds good. Just then, one of the moms jumped into the conversation. Not so fast. We have to celebrate our win, Craig. I'm taking the whole team to get oh, pizza. Man. Oh, I don't know if I can. Nonsense. The girls won. What sort of celebration could we have without our fearless leader? <laughs> she lays her hands on his shoulders and gives him goo-goo eyes. Man, this mom is laying it on thick. <coughs> Amanda and I share a look. All right, all right. Is it cool if my bro comes along? The mom looks slightly put out but covers it up with a smile. Of course. Mm -hmm. Where are we going? Thirsty's Pizza? What? Eh? What? It's a real place. Okay, I guess we did go to Thirsty's Pizza. Endless stream of girls clad in softball gear pile out of a minivan and into a local pizza buffet. Reminds me of all the awful pizza we put in our bodies back in the day. Remember how we used to just fold wall whole pies in half and then put taco fillings inside? Ah, Pizza Coast. I could never forget. How did we survive college? Mm -hmm. Our bodies were younger back then. More elastic. More able to handle the toxic waste we put inside of us. The good old days. The kids run around playing games. Oh. Hey, give me a pizza then. What? No, absolutely not. Haha, oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm strictly eating salad here. Thanks for addressing the issue, Amanda. Mm. Dad. A different mom walks up to us, talking to Craig as if we weren't even there. Craig, thank you so much for looking after our kids. My daughter tells me every day about how great you are. Stay the fuck off, my man. I'm happy to look after them. Definitely helps when I have kids of my own. It's been so hard since Daniel left. I'm glad to know that my children have a strong male role model in their lives. Fuck off, you charlatan. Harlot. Homewrecker. Amanda and I look at each other. Craig gets it from all angles, huh? Craig smiles sheepishly. Aye. Thank you so much, dude. Craig holds his fist up for a fist bump from the mom in what I think is a maneuver to lighten the conversation. He looks super uncomfortable. I should throw him a bone here. Creative diversion. Tag team with Amanda. She's definitely going to handle this better than me. A 
give Amanda another knowing look, and she hits me back with a nod. She understands. Amanda puts her hand to her stomach and looks at me with puppy dog eyes. Dad, I don't feel so good. I think I ate too much pizza. Oh no, sweetie. You're not going to projectile vomit everywhere, are you? Yeah, I think I am going to projectile vomit everywhere right now. Hey, thanks for the sub, Flinders. Appreciate it. The words projectile vomit and right now usually seem to get everyone to clear out, but Martha's not budging. <laughs> Back it up, Martha. You're in the splash zone. Holy fuck, how is she? She is incredible at acting. I drank a lot of orange juice this morning, and it's feeling pretty acidic. You'll be fine. Amanda shoots me a worried look. This con is going sideways. I should have known that a mom of all people would know the fake puke scam. Uh, well, I guess it went away, and I'm fine now, and nothing's wrong. She turns her back on me to talk to Craig. So I'm taking Hazel and Briar tonight for the sleepover? Mm. Yep, they're pretty excited about it. You'll keep them out of trouble, right? Oh, of course. But I could always use help watching after everyone tonight. If you're not doing anything. Wow, this lady is really going for the cold. Hey! Huh, it'll actually be nice to have a night to myself and River. But thanks for the invite. Hmm. Uh, Martha, you might want to grab your child. She's stuffing pizza into a coin slot. Thanks for the sub, Nemo Fart. Nemo Fart. Martha angrily turns her attention toward her daughter. Tiffany, not another arcade machine. I swear if we have to buy it. Martha storms off. She seems nice. Oh. Yeah. Team is one big weird family. Tiffany, don't eat the tokens. Oh. Tiffany's a stellar hitter. Phew, I finally think I have time to talk to Craig now. Man, you're a busy guy, huh? Mm -hmm. Only on days like today, I hope. Dad. Huh? Hey, girls. Dad, can you help us beat our record on Dance Dance Revolution? We told Ariana's dad that you could destroy him on the dance mat. Please help. Oh, man. Girls, you know I don't have my jukes anymore. But Dad... Craig looks at me like a hurt puppy. Uh -huh. Sorry, dudes. Duty calls. I promise we'll catch up. It's all good, buddy. DDR is not something you can, like, choose to turn on and off. It, it, you know, it picks you. Man, I was really hoping to hang out with Craig, but he gets dragged in every direction. Definitely wasn't like this in college. I feel like we might be a third wheel here. Yeah. There's worse places than an arcade to be left to your own devices. You're right. Want to drop some coin on pinball? You know what? Amanda and I pull up a machine that's feeling pretty hot and get to work. I'm a little rusty, but the pinball wizard within me will never die. I pull out a decent score and then challenge Amanda to top mine. And immediately she gets multiball. Looks like she takes after her father. You're good. Ugh. Don't patronize me. Hey, just trying to pay a con- Amanda shushes me. She's in her zen zone. She fights valiantly, racking up points by the millions. She's this close to beating my score, but I feel honored just being able to watch. You're friends with Craig, right? Janet from earlier walks up and leans on the pinball machine. Uh, yeah, we went to college together. <sighs> Please don't lean on my thing. Huh? That's so interesting. So do you know if he's, like, available? Oh, I honestly don't know if I could say. Hmm. Seriously, you're gonna make it tilt. Because it's just, it seems like so much work to watch after his kids. Don't you think it would be great if he... Hmm. Lady, I swear to God. All of a sudden, a buzzer sounds and the game is over. Janet made the pinball machine tilt. Oh no. What? You stone harpy. What? Ugh. I said, I have to go over there now and put pizza in my mouth so I don't say anything that'll hurt your feelings. Amanda? Nice. Bro, what's going on? Uh -huh. Now's our chance. If we don't get out of here now, we're stuck for the rest of the night. I wrangle Amanda and say some quick goodbyes with Craig. We head out of the pizza place, finally. Amanda promises she'll keep the couch warm for me and heads home. Oh. Why, do I just, like, not have a bedroom in my own house? Not great for my back. Hope you don't mind me bringing you back here, bro. Not at all, dude. It's good to finally get you all to myself for a second. River burps. Well, almost all to myself. <laughs> Hold up. Craig walks over to the trunk of his car and pulls out two gloves and a softball. Oh. Up for some catch? This fucking sports nerd. You throwing the ball and me running after it, but sure. We stand in the middle of the empty baseball and start tossing the ball back and forth. Mm. I have a cooler in my car that we could grab. There's only juice boxes. Man, fatherhood is strange. Mm. You're telling me. I can't believe I'm looking back on my keg stand Craig days and reminiscing about it. Those were some good times. I don't know anyone else who could pull off the rare horizontal he keg stand. Oh. It was a feat of discipline, bro. Trust me. I haven't properly hung out with Craig in so long. I don't even know where to begin. Ask about coaching softball? Ask about the business. He definitely wants to talk about work on his off time, I think. So, you run a business now? Bro! Yep. 
We sell fitness gear, imports and exports mostly, but we're coming up with our own line of athleisure wear soon. I nod. I mostly use my sweatpants for watching TV and not, you know, sweating. Sounds like he's making a killing. If you ever need athletic gear, I've got your back. You can sponsor me. I'll wrap your athleisure wear brand while I mow my lawn. Oh. That's the glamorous lifestyle we're catering for. Ask about the kids. I gotta ask about all of them, man. You know? You gotta be really invested in the person who you're trying to woo. I can't believe you're a father oh. of three. Neither can I. You know me. I'm an indecisive person. You switched your major four mm -hmm. times. Yeah, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life, but raising kids, when Briar and Hazel were born, it all finally made sense. It was like all the time I had spent trying to figure things out to lead to them. I couldn't be happier about it. I don't think I've ever cared about anything as much as I care about them. I had the exact same feeling when Amanda was born. I thought we had adopted her, whatever. It was the best thing to ever happen to me. It could be the only thing that had ever happened to me, and I would still be proud of the life I lived. So is this is softball coach the life you wanted, or was it the life that was thrust upon you? Hmm. Ha, I'll admit that I was hesitant at first. Briar and Hazel had so much energy that we just could, had to get them into sports, but no one was there to run the team. The more I did it, the more I saw how much it meant to all the girls. I'm worried there'd be a riot if I quit. It's like being a YouTuber. I would also be afraid of a bunch of tiny children with metal bats. Yeah, it's like being a YouTuber. Have you guys seen yourselves? Oh. They're quick in the way they work, and they work as a team. I've trained them too well. They take you down like a pack of velociraptors on a T-Rex. Exactly. Oh. It's nice out here. Quiet. Must be good to get away from the softball moms for a bit. Huh. Chris, Christ, Janet. Yeah, that was a lot. Were they always like that? Hmm. Actually, this wasn't nearly as bad. Holy shit. How has he not been, like, sexually harassed by now? Well, no, I guess that basically is sexually harassment. Yikes. Uh... I'm just so not interested. Well, what are you interested in? Oh. <laughs> he said the way he said, oh. Oh. Peace and quiet. That hot, hot silence. <laughs> My ultimate sexual fantasy is sleeping in on a Saturday. Hmm. But more seriously, I just can't get back into dating right now. I couldn't even if I wanted to. There's no time. And I feel so uncomfortable trying to introduce a stranger into my girl's life. They've already been through so much, I can't put them through that. Men. Buddy, I hear ya. Oh. So, the moms can't hit on me all they want, but the girls are my top priority. Hit softballs, don't get hit on by moms. Those kids love you, and to add to the whole team loves you. I think you got this whole dad thing mm. down right. Thanks, bro. Mm. That means a lot, coming from you. Well, I'm distracted. I missed this off. <laughs> Domed. Wow, that hurts. Amanda was right all along. Uh -huh. Sorry, dude. I forgot we were playing catch that entire time we were having a conversation. Craig runs mm -hmm. over to me. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Wait, let me do the dad thing for a second. Craig spends a moment examining my head. Know. It's worse than I thought. Don't tell me you have to kiss it to make it better. Please tell me you have to kiss it to make it better. Dude! You would be so lucky. I mean... You probably don't teach the more advanced techniques to the Little Leaguers, but Babe Ruth used to catch balls with his teeth all the time. I still got mm -hmm. it. Huh, maybe they'll learn in high school. I get up and dust myself off. River yawns. Mm -hmm. Hey, little buddy. You must be getting tired. Huh. Mm -hmm. Burger, burger shirt, burger shirt. Yeah, the kid's right there. I'm not gonna, I don't want to do that in front of, you know, him. He's busy. I hate to say it, but I should probably head out. Some things are so, you get older and life just kind of gets in the way, huh? We start walking back to the parking lot. Hey, remember that one house party that got broken hey. up by a helicopter? Does that happen often? How could I forget? You and me hopped over a concrete wall to get there. But the other side of the fence was a parking lot where a bunch of cops were parked. Oh. oh man, yeah. Could you imagine the look on our faces? We just walked straight past them like we were out for a stroll. And not knowing that we were at the party, they started joking with us about how much big of a bust it was. You had to talk with them for 30 minutes. You told them you were interested Dude. in joining the academy and then they started giving me pointers. Hmm. Good old days, right? We get back to our cars. Craig pulls me into a hug, or at least as much as we can manage with a baby between us. Oh. Never enough time, huh? Why are, like, his passive moans so sensual? Guess mm. not. Let me make it up to you. Let's hang soon, yeah? I'd like that. I yawn as I walk through the door, spotting Amanda hunched over her collage, glue stick in hand. 
Burning the Midnight Art Oil. Oil. I figured I might do something productive between episodes of Shark Hunter lip sync battles. What is it with, like, the weird show names they come up with, man? I feel like they just, like, escalate in severity. <laughs> yes. I look over her shoulder at the collage. Amanda, this is some good art. Look at this good art you made. <laughs> Thanks, I'm just about done. Like before, I st it's still a lot of dogs. In one corner is a giant pile of cash. In the other, it's... Amanda, is that me? Mm -hmm. Yep, the whole thing is about my goals for the future. And those are basically just to sit on a giant pile of money with my 20 dogs and also have a strong and mutually supportive relationship with my father into adulthood. That's very emotionally mature of her. Oh, now you've done it. Get ready to watch your dad cry. Here it comes. It's happening. Oh. Aw, dad. You did this with your good art. She pats me on the back. Mm. Hey, how was your hang with Craig? I wipe a tear from my eye. It was good. That Craig guy sure is busy. Hmm. Yeah, dude, that softball life isn't for quitters. Also, I'm very proud of you for you face <laughs> facing your fears today. How does it feel? I'm on top of the world, Pops. I should start facing my fears more often. Oh, yeah? How about tomorrow we hit some empty parking lots and practice, dare I say, parallel huh. parking. Baby steps, Dad. I'll work my way up to it. All right, I'm going to hit the hay. Take care of late night television for me, all right? I'll let them know you said, hey, parasocial relationship with Jimmy Fallon. Date complete. Holy shit. Relax, dad. Proud parent. Holy shit, I killed that. It's like a new PR. Good grief. Keg stand champion. Let's go. While I'm doing my afternoon world jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. That nice mail person slides a couple letters in a large yellow envelope to the slot. Takes a couple tries for them to get it in. Hey, my coupons. I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda? She yells. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy. Okay, just thought you'd want this big old envelope we got from HIA. All right. Immediately, she pushes her door open. You get ranked on dates? That's hilarious. Real. Horn Institute for the Arts? I mean, if you're busy, I could come back. <laughs> Father, please. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of envelope, pulls out a letter and unfolds it, and... The suspense is killing me. Amanda's face is unreadable. Uh -huh. I can't believe this. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't- hey! I got in! Oh, I got in. Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. This is probably a good time to mention I can't afford to pay for your college, because I don't have a job, as this game has made very clear. Also, we just bought this house with, like, the last of your tuition money. Sorry. Ah. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got it. You're a great student. You nailed that interview, and your photography is incredible. Uh. Wait, Dad. Uh. I know this one's really expensive, and it's so far away. I think for a moment, HIA was one of the more expensive schools. Mm. It'll be tough, but we're gonna make it work. Mm. Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me All again. Right. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice. Whatever you want. You know, it's making me realize that... On the off chance that maybe I ever do want a kid, maybe I should, like, start a college fund for them now. Because even if I don't have a kid, it doesn't hurt to, like, have all that money just sitting there. It's not, it's, it's not a bad thing to, like, you know, just get going, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. Wherever. Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing our, tearing into our foil-wrapped burritos from a nearby food truck. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito with a view. I can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. <laughs> How are there only 735 viewers? This is a lot of viewers for us, man. This is a big stream. And the, he had smoke going to fucking college in 16 years. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes, and there are all these galleries nearby. And there's a discount if you bring your student ID in. Amanda, slow down. I'm gonna choke on your burrito. I know, I'm just excited. Did I mention that students get their own studio space once they're, once they're seniors? And we all get the professional photo editing software for free? It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it in between bites of her burrito. I wonder who my roommate will be. 
Craig and I were a good roommate can be a lifelong friend, but don't even get me started on bad roommates. Huh? Oh no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig bought home one, one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. <laughs> Carl ruled. Yes. King. Absolute king. Ooh, they- I just farted. It's, it's a pretty- is a pretty, like, meaty one, too. Ooh, they let you have animals in dorms if you get a note saying you need one. I bet I could forge one. I think I'd get a rabbit. Or maybe a snake? Or maybe both. Would the snake eat a rabbit, though? Oh boy. I think I'll leave all that up to you. She's so funny. I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So, you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega. Mm. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? What? No. Mm. I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need you to knock it out of the park these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. I know you could do it. <laughs> okay. I promise I'll try harder. I pat her on the back. Think you can handle a 14-hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's going to be some treacherous ice roads to cross. Don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. Most- I feel like most kids, like, have a more, like, ten tenuous relationship with their parents as they go off to college. That's very sweet of her. Hmm. My eyes immediately well up. Oh, Dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now, and you're such a good person, and I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop. You're gonna make me cry, too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears on my burrito. It's gonna make it taste sad. I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss her on the forehead. Love you, kiddo. Love you too, pops. Emotional, uh, emotional Welcome. stimulation simulator. You got dads. Somebody actually made that fucking line. Oh, I thought there was gonna be a new message. I'm delighted to see you. There's a, yeah, it's the same one. Hello, Amanda's dad. It's me, your friend Craig, who loves sports. I have nice and smart children who are good at computers. Ah, oh, man, great to hear from you, buddy. Ah. What's up? You just ghosted me? I'm still strong, 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 strong. Strong. I am strong. Ha! Huh, don't I know it. Say, I've been reading up about whey protein. You use that at all? I figured it would help me develop a bit more muscle. Yes, I know what that is. My children are having a tea party, and they wanted to invite Amanda, but we can't find her on here. You're also invited. Physical invitation to follow. Cool, I'd love to come. I'll let Amanda know. Thank you, Amanda's dad. Yeah, we're, guys, we're going. We're going. We're going. We have strong foundations. We have to see this through. Coffee time. You know dads love coffee. Gonna brew myself something black as midnight on a moonless night. I put on a fresh pot and work on a few word jumbles while I wait for it to brew. Hey, this one spells sorrow. Dad, ready for today? I'm ready for every day, sweetie. Hmm. No, are you ready for the thing that we're gonna do today? The thing that you'd promised you'd do? Honey, I already told you that I'm not gonna throw away my Tom Clancy novels. They're just stacked in the living room. I keep bumping into them and knocking them over and you don't even read them. Wait, no, that's not what I'm here about. The tea party, Dad. Nope, I don't remember that. Craig's kids? That hand-drawn invitation? <laughs> Amanda walks over to the, to the refrigerator and comes back with a hand-drawn invitation. They spelled cordially wrong. Yeah, what fucking idiots. God. And they were supposed to be the cool set of twins. Fucked up all their goodwill with a typo. I can go outside in sweatpants. <sighs> Nothing's stopping me. Dad, just... I'll see you in a minute. Put on going outside pants? Yeah, I, I, dude, I gotta have drip when I go out, alright? Hello, thank you for coming to our tea party. I do my best bow and present my daughter, who thanks them with a curtsy. This way, please. Briar and Hazel lead us, lead us to a small table with tiny chairs. Some are occupied by stuffed animals, and Matt and his daughter, Carmen Cita, are here too. Matt raises a comically small plastic teacup at me. Hey, dude. How's the tea? Hey. The imaginary tea is absolutely wonderful. Taste a hint of lemongrass. He wouldn't know. He knows what he's talking about. Hello, Mr. Amanda's dad. Smart kid. Please have a seat. 
I sit down between Amanda and Matt. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to be able to get out of this chair. Hey. Hi, everyone. Hey. I turn to see Daisy and Brian enter into the backyard and take a seat next to us. Sorry, we're late. Daisy made me put on my going outside pants. See, Amanda? Hmm. Amanda gives me a knowing look and I return an obliging wink. She rolls her hmm. eyes. Is that really something your daughter had to pressure you into, Brian? I give Amanda another, even more exaggerated wink. She rolls her eyes even harder. Thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedule. Look, shed schedules. You're a British person? For some high tea. Now, if you'll all put on your designated TRs. Huh. There are little TRs sitting on everyone's plates. Well, except for Brian's. He is, his is a softball helmet. Yeah, have you, they're still wearing their softball uniforms, like, days after the game. I don't know, that just doesn't seem very hygienic or practical. Oh, we ran out of TRs. Uh -huh. I don't think this is going to fit me, but I appreciate the thought. Dad, your royalty. Please act like Whoa. it. Brian tries to balance the ill-fitting softball helmet on top of his head, but it immediately tumbles off. <laughs> I'll get that later. Hi, guys. He comes out with a tea bot and a tray of sandwich cookies. Dad, is the tea ready? Oh. Mm. Yeah, it's been, um, steeping. Awesome. Oh. Would you girls like to serve your guest tea? No, thank you. We much appreciate our servant's help. Craig leans over to mm -hmm. me. That's me. Craig places teacups in front of all of us and a single sandwich cookie onto each of our plates. He pours some tea into my cup, awfully fluorescent for tea. I clink my teacup with mats and take a sip. Hey. Good lemonade. It's tea. Hey. Right. Very good tea. I lean over to Amanda, who's happily enjoying her tea. God. When are we gonna, like, why do we keep coddling these fucking kids? They didn't make this shit. It's lemonade, and it's, like, mid at best. They're never gonna, like, grow up into functioning members of society if you, like, go easy on them. What do we do mm -hmm. at tea parties? We enjoy the splendors of upper-class society, father. She takes a dainty bite of her sandwich cookie. Marvelous. So the meeting of princesses has been called to order. Here, here. But I'm a warrior princess. I hunt and stuff, and I have, like, a really cool sword. Can I be a space princess? I'll allow it. And I'll be rock star princess. I'm also a space princess. Can there be more than one? Hmm. Space is pretty big, don't you think? I changed my mind. I want to be a space princess, too. Uh -huh. Okay, now you're just fucking riding the wave. Trent Hopper. Dad, do I get to be a princess? Duh. Well, I guess that makes me... History Channel Princess, Hacker Princess, Rude Boy Princess. Fuck. I don't know. This is just like historical princess, and typically those like those ones don't have it great, do they? It usually doesn't go great, does it? History, hacker, hacker, hacker. Hacker. History channel has aliens. Hacker hacker can have aliens too. They're all bad? Well, yeah, but it's picking the least offensive of these. The least painful. Hacker girl boss. Oh, Rude Boy is a Rihanna song? Okay, that, that goes kind of hard if that's the case. I'm gonna just go Hacker Princess. I surf the information superhighway on my cyber deck, hacking into mainframes and unleashing havoc on the megacorps of this dystopian neo-metropolis. I also roll a blade everywhere. I'll think I'd be- I'll be landscaper and general contracting hey. princess. Barista princess, reporting for hey. duty. He- He's the only one with a usable fucking name. Crossfit princess. Okay, that kind of works. Not now, servant. Mm. If it weren't for the princess uprising, it would be you serving me. We sip tea for a little longer. They grew up so fast. It was like yesterday that I was helping Amanda throw her own tea parties. Mm. Did she make you a servant too? You betcha. Carmen Cena made me actually brew tea for hers. Pitfalls of owning a coffee mm. shop. Pitfall? Your custom blends are amazing. That hibiscus one gives you, uh, you gave me a while back was hey. choice. Aw, thanks. Ah. It's really nice the girls are getting along. Yeah, I'm really glad we move into this community. Hey. We are too. Amanda's been kind of a role model to them, you know? I hadn't even realized, and I don't even know if Amanda does either, but I guess they're right. All the girls in the neighborhood look up to her. She seems to go out of her way to play with them. I'm so proud. You better not proud dad credit this tea party quite. I brought extra word jumbles if anyone wants to kill some time. The dad rolls on and the girls get tuckered out. Amanda spends the whole day playing with them and taking their pictures, promising she'll send them the best ones later. We clean up. 
Hmm. Take care, guys. Thanks for coming. Bye, Hacker Princess. Mm. You want dinner? Huh. Nah, I filled up on cookies. That's not a balanced meal. Mm -hmm. Dude, same. Playing with a bunch of little kids who all simultaneously want your attention and approval is surprisingly exhausting. Mm. But in a good way? But also in a kind of scary way. How so? Oh. I feel like I gotta be on my best behavior for them. I don't want to let them down. Is this because you still feel bad about dropping the F-bomb in front of your cousin that one oh. time? I corrupted her, Dad. She secondhand smokes now. <clears throat> well, those kids really look up to you. I'm glad they have you as a role model. Mm. Shucks, Pops. I ruffle her hair. Good parenting moment. Welcome. You've got dads. Thanks. Why does it keep saying this shit like they have, like it's a new message when it never fucking is? Okay, yeah, we're, we're dating Craig again. Bro, she said, fuck, what a loser. Yeah, at least go for like the harder F word. Don't do that. That was a joke. Don't say that. I really want to get some good quality time in with Craig. The last time we hung out, he was so busy that with the kids and fending off flirty moms that I feel like we barely talked. Ever since the first time we hung out, I've been trying to get up a little early for runs. I don't think I'm going to be as embarrassing as last time. Maybe I'll even be able to catch up with him now. I typed out a message to him on Dadbook. Hey man, been training on my run game. He responds almost immediately. Dude, of course, emojis. Uh, I didn't know why he didn't just send an emoji rather than type it out. Thanks for the 200 bits, Sammy. Another message pops into my inbox. Let's meet up tomorrow early morning for my favorite activity, brunch. Brunch. Oh, it's, it's the capitalized run. You run and then you get brunch. That sounds pretty good, actually. Craig and I agree to a time to meet in the morning, and I have a chance to spend the evening hanging with Amanda. So, we doing pizza tonight? Again? Can't we do, like, a salad night? Whoa. Dad, are you on a health kick? I... not yet. I formed a committee to examine the possibility of being on a health kick. They haven't returned with their findings. <sighs> Dad, if you go on a health kick, then I have to go on a health kick by virtue of being under the same roof as you. I don't know if I have the constitution for that. The committee is still out. The committee isn't back with its findings yet. This is a multi-year assessment on several bureaucratic levels. Ah. Well, Amanda picks up the phone and stares at me, unblinking as she dies. Yeah. Hi, yes, can I get an extra large pizza with chicken, bacon, extra cheese, and tomatoes, and a couple of garlic sauce cups? Amanda, you're going a little north here. Yeah. Oh, right, can you maybe throw some leaves on there or something? Yeah, he's going on a health kick. Yeah, Rico, I know it's tragic. Hmm. Hold on, mm -hmm. I'll ask. Dad, is oregano a salad? Isn't oregano a, ch a cheese? Define oregano. Oh, it's a plant. I'm fucking brain dead. It's fucking leaves? <laughs> you can tell I don't eat salad. <laughs> it's an herb. It's a spice. <laughs> Dude, that's, dude, that, like, Flinders include that, because that's the, that's gonna be the thing everybody fucking comments about, and it's gonna boost engagement so hard. Holy fuck, baited as fuck. You guys got baited, holy shit. Holy shit, I love engagement. Ah. Can't blame me for trying. Nah, Rico. Amanda hangs up. Rico says, hey. You guys, you, you guys suck. I hate you guys so much. You just bring up the wiki thing now whenever you've been duped. The food gets delivered and we plop down on the couch to eat some za. Just be careful. Running is a gateway drug. It's a slippery slope, Dad. First you go on a couple light jogs and before you know it, you're converting the garage into a home gym. Question. Shoot. What's kombucha? Ah. Okay, so you aren't too far gone yet. Yeah. I'm just giving you a hard time, Pops. I'm really happy you're running more and caring about your health. I'm gonna keep you around for as long as possible. <laughs> you gonna be able to keep up with him? Hey. Probably not. <laughs> we laugh at eating more pizza than is probably healthy. When I first started running in the mornings, it was pretty hellish. Now that I'm a few sessions in, it admittedly has become a little bit easier. Despite it always ending in me dry heaving over a trash can. Is this what a runner's high is? Just dry heaving? 
Fuck, I need nice. some more water soon. Yeah, carry me on your back, Craig. He's dressed head to toe in color coordinated running gear. He's very clearly not. Hey, bro. Morning, Craig. Oh. Best as you can. We're taking it to the limit, aren't we, kiddo? Goo. Hmm. You got some in your mouth. Oh, I know what that means. Craig hands her a stuffed toy, which makes her smile ear to ear. That's really oh. sweet. That's cute. That's Arnold the Capybara. Sometimes it's the only thing that'll get her to stop crying. Oh, I've been there. Amanda had a stuffed panda that she carried around everywhere. She would have a tantrum if we even tried to wash it. It was gross. So you've been running lately? Every morning for 30 minutes. I'm basically an elite athlete by this point. <laughs> huh. Well, I'll try and keep up. He's so charming. Hmm? I was thinking we could do a couple laps around the park. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Uh -huh. Then we'll do some hill climbs up a slope. Uh, okay. I can probably handle nice. that. Nice. And then we'll close it off by doing some wilderness survival hike running to increase our agility. I'm suddenly struck with the overwhelming need to crawl back into bed. Uh -huh. That sound okay to you? I usually like to throw some timed murder sprints in there, but I'll be easy on you since you're a beginner. That sounds like something I am able to physically do. Bro. Great, let's get started. Oh. Craig and I finally arrive at the park. A few other lone joggers make their way around the perimeter and river waves enthusiastically at everyone we pass. It's a lot more peaceful in the morning, aside from birds chirping and river gurgling away in the stroller. It's pretty quiet. Is that, is that, I thought it was like a carrier, not a stroller. All right, good warm-up. That was the warm-up? Nice. Let's start the show. Hey. But wait. Craig reaches into his bag and tosses me a water bottle. I fumble it, but oh. don't drop it. We gotta hydrate, bro. We gotta piss lasers like the Death Star. I take a long drink from the water bottle and feel reinvigorated. Man, I don't drink enough water. Hey. I look down and pick up Arnold, River's toy, and hand it back to her. Must have dropped this. Mm. Thanks for looking out, bro. Hey. You ready? Yeah! Hmm. Time to push myself way harder than I should be and puke. We finally finish our however many teen lap around the park. I'm breathing heavily, but I can't believe I actually didn't lose Craig. He's even breathing heavily too, which makes me feel a little better. I look down at my shirt and notice that I'm drenched in sweat. Huh, almost looks like a frowny face. And the eyes are my nipples. That's one. What? Hey! I'm just kidding. Good hustle out there. I'm really impressed. You're way better than the last time I launched you off a treadmill. Yeah, man, you really pushed me to my limit just now. I can't believe I held on. Mm. Sometimes you just need someone there with you to push you to do your absolute best. I'm glad I could be that guy, bro. <laughs> Who's ready for hill climbs? Flap. Mm -hmm. There's my little cheerleader. Quiet, you ready? Ugh, I, I feel like the middle option's safe here. If you do too many, you just seem, like, I annoying for, like, even agreeing to it in the first place. But if it's too short, you sound like you're genuinely pissed. You bet. <laughs> Craig takes me to a separate portion of the park where there's a steep, chill, steep hill that seems to go up forever. I strain my eyes to see some other joggers at the top. So what do we do nice. now? We run up the thing. That looks like a lot. Hmm. Quite. There's two things you need to know about this hill. One, don't stop running till you get to the top. And two, Craig points to the top of the hill. Hey. That's not the top. Let's do this. I... <laughs> I finally reach the top of the hill after making my way past what I originally thought was the top of the hill. Once there, I hunch over onto my knees and gasp for air. My lungs are like daggers poking my ribs. I can feel my heart in my ears. I, I don't know what that noise was. I was doing my best. River, I'm having a moment, please. Oh boy. Craig looks like he's taken a beating as well. Ha! So he is human. Hmm. He's slick and covered in sweat. Sorry, sorry. Quite, put your arms on your head and stretch out your elbows. It'll help you breathe better. I do as Craig says. It feels a little better, but I'm still in oh. agony. And here, Craig tosses me the water bottle again. I hydrate like my life depends on it. Thanks, dude. Hey! Phenomenal work. You feel that lightness in your head. That's the runner's high. Oh, that's it. I thought it was just, you know, dying. Hmm. Want to take it slow for a bit? I would like that very much. As we're catching our breath, River starts crying. Oh. What's wrong, sweet pea? Do you want to play with Arnold? Craig looks around us. Hey. Oh boy, man down. I think we lost Arnold. River keeps wailing. Dude. I've abandoned my child's toy. We gotta find him, dude. It should be simple, right? We just gotta retrace our steps. I remember R River last having it down at the bottom of the hill. We get to the place where River might have dropped it, but it's nowhere to be found. Looks like we've got a mystery on our hands. 
I suspect foul play. Looks like this is a prime case for world-renowned detective, quote. Oh. Dude, it's time for a bro adventure. You could have just said bro. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Oh. We high-five and decide to jog back to the park to see if we can find any leads. Hmm. So it looks like there's a couple more places to check and some bros around here that we could interrogate. Sounds good. Dude. Wait, who's good cop and who's bad cop? I think about it for a second. Well, I think that with your stature and overall resilience, you would make an intimidating bad cop. But on the other hand, you do have an adorable baby strapped to your chest, so that softens the edges a bit. Oh. All valid points. I think you would make a great good cop because of your congenial attitude and willingness to try new things. But then again, I've seen how you get when there are too many commercial breaks during a show, so you have the potential to be a scary bad cop. I don't want to have to watch Meat Hell in three minute segments with five minute- yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey! Case in point. Let's play it moment by moment. Oh. Smart. Mm -hmm. So, where to, protective? Uh, before I pick, I need to grab some water for the sake of my throat, because I'm doing a lot of reading this stream. Uh, and I'm also going to pee, so... You guys know what time it is. While there's 700 people watching me, I'm running a fucking ad break! <laughs> Hey guys, I'm back. I'm, I'm back, as I said. Cold. Would you guys believe me if I said I've just been incinerating this entire stream? Now I'm suddenly cold again. Ad break's over, so we're chilling. My tracking wasn't working for a second. Guys, where are we feeling? Where are we feeling? Yeah, stream pest. That's a much nicer AFK chant, instead of, you know, making fun of me. I, I really appreciate that, as opposed to, um, you know, making fun of a miss- like a misspeak I had. He'll never know. Know what? Thanks for- thanks for letting me live in ignorance, guys. Appreciate it. I'm thinking we start at the playground. My, my current theory is that some bum-ass kid stole it. And then, where else do you find kids? Playground. Not that I'd know, because I'm not with the lad within like 100 feet of those. We make our way over to a small playground at the edge of the park. A couple of kids play on the jungle gym while parents watch on the nearby benches. Over on one of the benches, I spot a familiar face. Look for clues. Craig and I, two grown adults, walk into the playground and began examining meticulously for Q. Clues. There's no forensic evidence here, no stray capybara hairs. After searching fruitlessly, we find we look up. 
All the parents are staring at us. We smile and wave as we awkwardly slink away. We head back to the playground. Let's see what Joseph's up to. Uh, Y'all jog over to jo Yeah, this is the Wonder Bread guy I was talking about. I feel bad for him. His life seems awful. Wife who hates him and tries to hit on every like person she finds at a bar. Uh, four kids. All of whom suck. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Joseph! Yeah. Joseph nearly drops his book. Yeah. Hey guys, didn't think I'd see you two out here. Quite. Are you exercising? Sure am. You know me. I just love to run and be healthy. That's kind of my whole thing. What are you reading? Oh, oh just a book on knots and rope tying. Rope bunny. For boats. Boat ropes. Right. Oh. Say, you didn't happen to see a stuffed capybara around mm. here. What's a capybara? Hmm. It's a large rodent that's native to South America. All right, give me a second. I have to text somebody. Sorry guys, this is an important text. Streamer broken? No, I had I had to I had to message someone. Okay, we're good. Sorry, I didn't want to leave that one hanging. So, like, I, I know it was, like, midstream and I just took an ad break, but, like, there's certain things you don't want to leave too long. <laughs> hmm. Haven't seen one around. I'll tell the kids to keep an eye out. Your kids are here? Nice. God damn it. God damn it. Can we, we let's, please let us leave. <laughs> they were here a second ago. Must have gone exploring around the park. Do you know where could they could have gone off to? They're kids. They get into mischief sometimes, but they always come back. All right, thanks for your help. Thanks, Joseph. We'll let you get back to your rope. Yeah. Rope book. Yeah. <laughs> Boat ropes. We head back to the playground. Uh, didn't we? We already interrogated Joseph. This is a pretty nice playground. Might as well get a couple swings in. What about Arnold? Maybe having a little swing might calm River down. Might buy us some more time. You're right. She's about to go nuclear. This might prepare her for the possibility of us not being able to find Arnold. Life is cruel and tough, but at least we'll, we'll always have swings. No, seriously, if I'm ever, like, at a playground and it's, like, got no one else there, like, it's just me and my homies at night, like, I will go on the swing. That shit is still sick. In my adulthood. I take a, a seat on the swing next to her and immediately realize that I'm stuck. River seems to love that. Craig eventually helps me out of the swing and we decide to get back to the investigation. We head back to the playground. Where to now, bro? Should we, uh, hmm, what are we thinking? Field? Woods? Do I interrogate Joseph a second time? Man-child, quite? I'm sorry for enjoying my goddamn life. Woods? Woods, got it. We make our way to the outskirts of the park. There are a couple of benches by the dense tree line. Looks like Robert's here all by himself. This also seems like the perfect place to look for clues. Craig and I search through the outskirts of the woods, hoping to find anything that might lead us to Arnold. There's a couple of cigarettes. This might be a dead end, partner, bro. We return to the woods. Maybe Robert saw something. We walk over to Robert's <sighs> bench. Hey, Rob. Mm. Don't call me that. Okay. Hi, Robert. Mm. Don't call me that either. Um, okay? Hey, buddy. I... What are you up to? <sighs> thinking. This is my thinking bench. <sighs> I have to get a solid two to three hours of brooding in per day. He, he's literally Shadow the Hedgehog. Color scheme, personality, exact name, exact name same. Hmm. Have you seen any, have you by any chance seen a small stuffed capybara around? A capybara mm. is, it's a large rodent native to South America, I know. Mm. So have you seen one? I... A stuffed one, not a real one. That would be weird. Hmm. Be good cop. Hmm. 
I feel like I feel like he'd appreciate it if I was bad cop. So he looks like less of an asshole. All right, Robert, we've been nice. Help us out or I'm gonna go off. Learn how to fight and then come back here to kick your ass. Mm -hmm. You, learning how to fight, please. Well, fine, if you don't tell us what we want to hear, I'm gonna spoil the season finale of Long Haul Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers. You're bluffing. Hmm. My buddy here doesn't play by the rules. Quite will do it. Callum and Flint crash into a haunted- oh, Stop, you. you're a monster. Oh. <laughs> Robert sighs. I haven't seen any goddamn capybara, okay? Damn. We tried. We returned to the woods. Yeah, that's like all there was to do, huh? I've deduced where we should go next. I'm gonna try out the field. We wander out to a grassy field at the center of the park. There isn't a whole lot to see, but there are a few figures camped out on the blanket, and the grass could hold any number of secrets. Interrogate River? Let's talk to Matt and his daughter. Carmen Sita spots us from across the way and waves. She's sitting with her dad on a sunny green patch of grass. Hey. Hey, dudes. Hey, bro. We just sat down for a picnic. Want some mm. snacks? Got anything to increase my... I can't say that word. Uh, we have apple mm. slices. Thank you very much, tiny bro, but I should hey. be fine. You guys working out? Good day for it. Yep, I'm the picture of health and athleticism. Mm -hmm. Good transition, quite. Say, you haven't seen a stuffed capybara around here anywhere, have you? Mm. What's a capybara? It's a large rodent that's native to South America. What a fucking helpful NPC. Wait a second, how do you know what a capybara is? You wouldn't happen to have had hands-on experience with one recently, would you? We learned about capybaras in the fourth grade. I think it's more suspicious that you know what a capybara is. Hey. Oh my god. What if I took Arnold? What if I'm the culprit and I just don't remember? I've had thoughts like that before. Like, I know for a fact I didn't do some shit, but I'm like, what if I did it and didn't realize that I did that shit? I quickly check my body for any Polaroids I might have kept on my person to remind me of who to trust and who not to trust. Good movie, Memento. I saw Memento once and I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Nothing. But what if that's what I wanted myself to think? Nope, quite, don't let them win. I shake off the thought. I saw a couple of squirrels over by that tree though. I don't know if that helps you, but if you, but if you want to see some cute squirrels, you should definitely check it out. I don't know. Thanks for the hot squirrel tip, Carmen Sina. Mm -hmm. Well, we better get moving. Hmm. Bye. Let me get some apples for the road, though. God bless Carmen Sita. We maneuver back to the field. Where did the suspect say the squirrels would be again? We head over to the drinking fountain. Nada. Didn't realize Carmen Sita was a liar. We carefully comb through. Quite. Oh. I jog over. Craig is kneeling in the grass, expecting something. This is... Arnold's leg. I put my hand over River's eyes. No one should have to be subjected to this. Senseless violence. My god, who... or what would do this? Oh. I don't know, but now that I think we might be dealing with something beyond our grasp, I can't look at this anymore. I turn around, trying to wipe the image of the stuffling strewn across the ground from my mind. We're running out of time. We may already be too late. Bag and tag it. Let's keep moving. We maneuver back to the field. Hmm. Wait, let me try this. It's always the culprit you least expect. I get eye to eye with Ripper, who still likes she's on the verge of tears. Bro. Hey, sweetie, believe me. Nobody wants you to find your capybara more than me. But we need more clues, and I think somewhere in that baby brain of yours you might have something that'll lead us to the perp. So what do you say, kiddo? Mm. That, that's helpful. I turn to Craig. We're getting nowhere with the witness. <laughs> Clock's ticking, dude. Where are we going next? Uh, Re-examine the field? We return to the woods. I'm starting to put the pieces of the case together, or I have indigestion. We better keep moving. We head back to the playground. Let's see what Joseph's up to. Oh. We jog over to Joseph, who seems to be engrossed mm. in his book. Joseph! Do you happen to know where Christian and Christy have gone? <laughs> They're kids. They get into mischief sometimes, but they always come back. Mischief, you say. More I, uh... Wait, am I being interrogated right now? No. 
only if you did something wrong. Thank you for your time, citizen. Wh wh which uh, which of the which of my which of these am I picking? Which of these am I picking? The dialogue in this game is so good. It, it you know it is, but if it wasn't, it, it would be a fucking shit game because it's literally just dialogue. It's the Wonder Twins. I swear on it. No. Yes. No. Yeah. Just doing our due diligence, Joseph. I. Arnold means a lot to River here. <laughs> I mean, you're more than welcome to ask Christian and Christian. I imagine they have their ears to the ground on all the Plato's playground drama. They might be somewhere around the woods. Thanks, Joseph. We'll let you get back to your rope. Book. Oh. Boat ropes. River's screeching is louder than ever. I'm exhausted. Craig is exhausted. Ah, buddy, I got a rain check on brunch. I need to get River home and calm her down. All right, good luck, bro. Thanks, bro. Damn it, we fucked the date. I fucked it! I fucking failed! God damn it! Hmm, I bet Amanda's still asleep. Yeah. I crack open her door to find her still in bed, sleepily scrolling through her phone. Morning. Afternoon, actually. Hmm. Right. How was brunch? Well, we had a good time with the run part, but we didn't make it to the rest of the portmanteau. Hmm. Huh? Redo? That's right, I can't load the file. It feels dishonest, though. It feels dishonest. It feels dishonest. But I'm doing it anyways. I don't care. Hmm. Wait, let me try this. It's always the culprit you least expect. I get eye to eye with River, who looks like he's on the verge of tears. Meh. I turn to Craig. We're getting nowhere with the witness. Clock's ticking, dude. Where are we going next? We have to- we have to go back in time. We have the power to save Arnold, so we have to. Let's see what oh. Joseph's up to. Oh. Joseph, do you happen to know where Christian and Christy have gone? Huh. Well, oh. Yeah, we've read all this dialogue, so I'm gonna skip through it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Boat ropes. Ah, oh, fuck. We didn't go far- we didn't go back in time far enough. Shit. How far back do we need to go? I'm trying to- I'm trying to find the right time- I think that was as far back as we could go, damn. I- I, I don't- I think, like, the auto saves are too- we're, we were too late. We were too late. Damn it. I should try to calm down River more. That's a good idea. We can go back again. We head back to the playground. River has had enough of the swings. Her mind will be singularly focused on Arnold. Yeah, that, that, that's the, I, I don't think I can then. In the woods? River's still holding together, but not for long. Her tiny eyes betray a barely concealed broiling rage just beneath the surface. Or something. She's a baby. I don't know. Oh, the squirrels! You're fucking right! Damn it! We return to the woods. Time to grill Robert again. We walk over to Robert's bench. Oh, Christ, what now? Come on, Robert. The sooner you tell us what you know, the sooner we can let you get back to brooding. I don't know. Bet cop time, Robert. If you don't help us, I'm gonna put you in a headlock. Mm. Is that a threat or a promise? Oh. Okay, man. Well, slow down. Uh. Back off. That didn't fucking work. Mm. Fuck. We screwed it again, guys. God fucking damn it. It has, it has to be... It has to be the field. It has to be. There's nothing else it could be. It has to be the field. Rewind, rewind, rewind. Clock's ticking, dude. Where are we going next? I can't, I can't. Fuck. Uh, yeah, I, I, guys, I don't think we're going to get it. I don't think we're going to get it. Do good cop with Robert? I already tried that. 
Shit. I'm really fucking this one up, man. Ah, hmm? oh, fuck. We, we just time traveled to me failing again. God damn it. Go back more? That's as far as I can go, man. There's a limited amount of autosaves. Bad cop. Robert, I'm gonna keep vaguely threatening you until Whoa. you tell something. Damn, again. So yeah, Robert knows nothing. This is not fucking helping. You'll have to redo it at this point? Yeah, I don't think it's gonna work, guys. Hmm. I fucked it too bad. We got nothing. Huh. Joseph, then Woods? Okay, okay. J Joseph, then Woods. redo the day I don't guys I can't go back that far I don't have the saves for that okay fucking like use your ears I've said it fucking 40 billion times you haven't bad copped river yet I don't I don't think that's gonna do anything and we can't go to that save yet anyways uh, hmm. yeah. That sounds a little suspect, Joseph. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Put ropes. Yeah, it's not. It's not happening, guys. It's not happening. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Two brunch. We didn't make it. Ah. 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 I'm just gonna hang out here for a while. You take your time getting up. Fuck that one. Damn. Date complete. Not great. Need to improve on your form. Not great. Not great. Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall to my room. I wonder if Amanda's awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, but can't make out what it is. Is she crying? Ah, oh, damn it. Hey, Amanda? The crying immediately stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strange. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. <laughs> in the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed. Knees hugged up against her body. Is everything okay? Cl clearly fucking not. Did, uh... Do you think this is... Is this, is this one of those times where I just, like, need to leave her be? Is this one of those times where I just need to leave her be? I don't know, man. Fuck! EQ is hard, guys. Presser? Ooh, it's t it's ask her. I'll, I'll ask one more time. I'll ask one more time. I'll, if, if there's another prompt after that, then I'm leaving. Because if beyond this, she's not chilling. Did something happen? No, nothing happened. Go away. All right, I'll leave you be. I back out of the room and close the door gently behind me. She immediately starts crying again. Wow, I have no idea what has her so upset. She seemed totally normal. Guys, I do have a bedroom! What the fuck?! Holy shit! I do have a bedroom that I sleep in, apparently. Good God! You should have talked. I mean, you, I I'm trying to think about this like how I would like in real life. If someone's that adamant about not talking about what's, like, fucking them up, you might, like, you might, like, you know, fuck it up already. Or you, like, might fuck up the conversation, you know? Wow, I have no idea what has her so I feel upset just leaving her cry, but I also get the feeling that if I tried to do anything else, it would only make her more upset. I can't stop mentally cycling through all sorts of awful things that could be I could be dealing with right now. She could be dealing with right now. I have a hard time sleeping. After a long mo night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's bothering her. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. 
Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle in the toaster and slams the freezer. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? <sighs> no. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster lever up and takes her still freezer burned waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and stores it. Ow, that, the audio leveling on that was loud. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short-lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda and I hanging on a wall. And then I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. Every time she'd fall, she'd get up and try again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. When she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying, I put the bike away. She stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her an ice cream and it was like it didn't happen. After giving it a bit of thought, I decide that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. I start rummaging around for ingredients. I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline for her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin? What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong, and I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Ed, I... So just... Whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Oh, no. Honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting has set by now. Ta-da. Dad. It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad and then had to start over. <laughs> Sorry you're sad, but I support you 100%. <laughs> this is beautiful. It's strawberry. Amanda gives me a big old hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve us up some delicious cake. So, it's really stupid. What is? This whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately, and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? Oh, no. I guess I should start from the top. So you know how MOR is going to the fancy art school in California, right? MOR? F... It's not... Not the not the dead goth and beyond, because I know that was, um... I know that was, uh, Amanda. Does anybody remember from the last stream which one she was? Was P or R the best friend? Was Emma P or Emma R the best friend? I need I need a cheat sheet. Emma P was the best friend. So she's the other one. So Emma R is the other one then, right? Emma R is the other one? Okay, I can't fuck this up. This is a crucial moment. This is a crucial moment. <sighs> I guess you're not technically wrong. It's good to have fallbacks like that one. Uh. Anyways, ever since she got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away. R's bestie? Fuck! God damn it, you guys fucked me on this one. You guys fucked me on this one. What the fuck? You sons of bitches. You screwed me. You screwed me! Anyways, ever since she got the acceptance letter, I feel like she's been drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out from Rosie M that both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all went to a party at McKenzie F's all on the same night. They all told me they were busy studying for a Calc AB final. Yikes. Uh. So, another important piece of information is... Ah, uh, God, this is embarrassing. I, um, have a crush on Noah, and, uh, yeah, we fucking knew. That's a thing. What? Whoa. I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. You're a bad liar. So are you. I learned from the worst. Oh. Anyway, so the only person I told about the crush was Emma R, and she promised not to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama, so I just... Kept quiet and kept keep going about my business. I made a size. And one day I invite everybody out to get nachos at the mall. And after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them have ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, 
They all say they're busy, like, simultaneously. So tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips, and I really, really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. Aww. So I go to the mall anyway, I get to the food court, and who do I see there but Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah, all hanging out together and eating nachos without me. What? <laughs> it gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them, and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. Oh, fuck. Shit, friend. Shit, friend. You should be happy she's out your life. What a fucking bitch. <laughs> no. Yes, I know. So I storm over there and I'm like, hey. And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt because of course she does. And MR just like glares at me. You're, you're the one who's a fucking like stupid two-timing bitch here. You, you, you prick. Grace, nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the... I don't... I, I don't know. I don't know. Does it matter which one I say she is? Because she's just venting right now, right? We don't know either. I'm going to just say the gossipy one. Hmm. I know. Oh. Grace is the one nobody really likes. Or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will <laughs> fucking... She was just so brutal about it. She's the one nobody likes. Well, I guess that's me. Fuck it. Jeez. Good comedic timing. So I left without nachos, might I add, which only further contributed to the shitty day, and immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat asking why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to MR asking how long the Noah thing's been going on, and... Sorry, I know that's a lot. You still following? That's okay. You're trying. So what happens next? Ooh, okay. Get a load of this. MR says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Amanda pulls out her phone and reads, word for word, an arduously long string of text messages. Mm. Can you believe that? I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about. This is be all beyond me, but I am trying my uh -huh. hardest to be supportive. They were dating in secret for, like, months. So I told her that she's being a really terrible friend, and she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay. And then she left me on red. And then, wait, left me on red? What's that? Okay. Oh, like, she saw my message and didn't reply, and I know because there are read receipts. I don't know what read receipts are, but I'm just going to nod and pretend I understand. Gotcha. So while this is all happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am because she's at least being kind of reasonable, and I'm venting to her about how I'm pissed at everybody and stuff. Uh -huh. And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me, he's like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. Okay, th that, that was very dumb on your part, Amanda. Emma P was literally hanging with the people that were excluding you, was conspiring with them to exclude you and, you, and you still vented to her. This is why you have an online Discord friend group and a real-life friend group that never mix. Because <laughs> you can complain about one to the other. Well, actually, you should only ever really complain about your IRL friends to your Discord friends. Never mention that you have Discord friends to your IRL friends. And then... All right, I think you lost me at screenshot, but that definitely sounds bad. <sighs> There's so much more, but honestly, it's all just really stupid teenager stuff. The bottom line is that everybody dropped me, half of my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Amanda, I'm so sorry. I almost expected it from everybody else, but <sighs> M.O.R. has been there since Dad died. I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. I'm not even that mad she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs at the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. I made it look so dejected I almost can't take it. What could I possibly say to help? Oh. Anyways, that's it. That's the whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know, it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb, that's fucked. Like, that's so shitty. No, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. Manda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. I guess. Unless you're secretly been a robot who's been approximating human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago. Seriously. I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. 
High school songs. Everybody call You guys don't know that song, I don't think. You probably wouldn't recognize the tune I'm like belting out. Not all friendships last forever. Real friends don't do that. Um, high school sucks feels like it's trivializing what she's saying. Not all friendships last forever. That doesn't justify what happened to her. I feel like real friends don't do that. Teaches her that if folks are going to be like this to you, it's not your fault. It's fucking, it's theirs. Like if, if it's happening exactly as she described, those friends were bitches. When you get older, you start realizing that sort of the sort of people you want to associate yourself with. Do they really want to surround yourself with people who would do something like that to their friend? It takes a lot of work to find and maintain meaningful friendships. It took me a long time to figure that out myself, and I wish I had learned it sooner. If the other person isn't putting the effort in to show you how much they care, it's not worth it. You're not beholden to being their friend. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours, because you're amazing, and if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. I'll keep that in mind. I look down at the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? Huh. Yes, we did just eat that whole cake. And there, there goes all the fucking calories I burned on the run. Well, good talk. Amanda gets up to go to her room before she closes her door. She turns around. Hey, Pops. Thanks for the hundred bits, Ooga Booga. <laughs> Thank you. You are always welcome. Love you, Amanda. I love you too, Dad. <gasps> Voiced words. <laughs> Welcome. You've got dads. Not gonna lie, you taking this seriously is making me realize that you actually have a chance at fatherhood. You guys have such little faith in me, but thanks, I guess. Hey, are you up to anything tonight? Hugo and I were planning to go to the Art Walk downtown, and we're wondering if you would care to accompany us. I would normally write a long, a letter longhand, but I've run out of distressed parchment, page, parchment paper. Whoa, why can I see Damien and Hugo's chat? Am I a hacker? But I don't even have a hacker alias. The feds are gonna bust down my door any minute now. I've gotta destroy this computer. Quite. This is a group chat. Oh, thank god. Do either of you guys know how to destroy a computer? You can run Derek's boot and nuke from a startup flash drive, but once you've done that, it's best to physically destroy the platters altogether. <laughs> the fucking three dots. Um... The Victorians were well versed in information security. Quite, do you want to go see some art or not? Art is good, let's go see art. Is this, is this like, does this help me get closer to Craig in any way? Should I just go to like, be a good community member? Like, does it, like, what does this do for me? What, what does this do for me? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I love Damien so much. That's the first funny thing he I've seen him say. Check if you can see Craig first. Yeah, I can, I can just do my third date, I think. Like, I'm not looking to... I don't think it'll advance your relationship with Craig. Yeah, there's no point. There's no point. I don't care about the fucking art. Like, the only one I'd go for is Hugo. Damien just does not interest me in the slightest. Hugo's just not the man I'm after this run, man. See the art? You don't always have to be on Craig's dick. Well, I'm on Craig's dick in this particular lifetime. Jeez. You gotta learn to prioritize, lad, folks, alright? Order of operations and all that. You know what they say about third dates. They get pretty serious. You might not have time to browse face dad book for a while. Are you? Yeah, I don't care. It took some time for our schedules to line up, but I was finally able to find a weekend where Craig and I could go camping. Stop going for Craig, he's the man everybody goes for, stop being boring. Listen, bud, I went into this game with literally no precedent. If that's who I naturally lean to, that's who I lean to. Fucking, I'm not here to conform to whatever you, like, whatever against the grain fantasy you want me to be. I am who I am. Get over it. It took some time for our schedules to line up, but I was finally able to find a weekend where Craig and I could go camping. He always stays so busy with work and kids, but it's good to know that we'll be just able to spend some time relaxing together in nature. Since our first run, I've managed to go on regular ones with Craig. I mostly do them because it's like the only time we get to hang out, but he needed the added benefit is that I've seen a lot of improvement in my health. 
I was able to sift through the attic and find my old camping gear from college. Craig put me in charge of bringing the sleeping bags in the tent while he takes care of food, so I double checked to make sure everything is ready to go. <clears throat> He's hot, but like art? I've been to art museums in my time, man. I've really tried to go there for fun. Them motherfuckers is boring. <laughs> It, it's not always boring, it just like depends who you go with and like the type of art museum you go to. <sighs> Amanda's gonna be spending the weekend on a school trip to our nation's capital. She hasn't been away from home without me for longer than a day since she was 14. I hope she isn't feeling as nervous about it as I am. Hey man, Panda. Amanda's in the middle of sitting on top of her luggage in order to get it to finally zip. Hey Pops. Ready for your trip? Once I get this bad boy all zipped up, I'm good to go. How much did you pack? That seems like a lot for two days. Oh, it's all of my camera equipment. Lenses, tripod, flash, all that. Are you even going to have time to take pictures? I'll find a way. I need to get some good shots. Ooh, what's the series hmm. about? It's one of those internet series where I reimagine Disney princesses as founding fathers. Okay, so literally just Hamilton. Hmm. I'm kidding. Nobody likes those. I'm taking portraits of my friends. Oh, well, I'm going to be in the woods. Out there in nature. You know, roughing it. Just me and other nature. The old Madre de Trees. Are you going to be all right on your own? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to have any signal out there. I won't be able to text or call you at all. Oh. Oh, it's all right. I'll be able to survive a couple days without constant updates on who got voted off international haunted house hunters. Well, I'll miss you. And for the record, Bradley was pushed down a flight of Renate's stairs by a ghost. They were really beautiful stairs. Yada yada yada, Amanda hugs me. Relax, Dad Trong. I'm a big kid now, I can take care of myself. Besides, I gotta share a room with Monica Sanders and two mom chaperones. The most trouble I could possibly get into is falling asleep with a tub of ice cream on me. Oh well, alright, don't steal anything, okay? Since you asked nicely, fine, promise. I step outside, hauling my bags behind me. Craig's already strapped some camping gear on top of my modest but stylish car. He notices me carrying my equipment and hurries over to take it from me. I almost had a case of the Bafers. Oh. <gasps> <laughs> the fucking eggplant emoji, dog! Oh. Never fear. These muscles were made for picking up heavy things and putting them in other places. Remember, it's your weekend to relax. Take it easy. Mm -hmm. I guess I can't argue with that. Oh. Everything good with Amanda? Yep, on her way to a school trip to Washington, D.C. What about your offspring? Oh. Already at Smashley's for the weekend. <laughs> Smashley's. I'm ready to get my camp on. I load the rest of my stuff into Craig's car and we get in. Mm. Oh no, what's wrong? I think I left my juicer plugged in. We gotta go back. Are you worried that someone's gonna break into your house and cold press some carrots? No, it's just... I... Just try to relax, man. Let the juicer float away. Take all your worries and blend them into pulpy good vibes. Craig takes a deep breath. Do we have anything to listen to? Uh, all I had at my place is a series of CDs that guide you through a thorough and intense calisthenics workout. Do you want to listen to those? Um, I'm just kidding. Craig hands me a thick case filled with CDs. Take your pick. I thumb through page after page of kids' sing-along CDs. Oh yeah, twinkle twinkle little star. Takes me back. Keep going. I get to the end of the case to find, in the very last slot, a blank CD with Craig's handwriting on it. DJ Keg Stands Mega Mix Volume 1! Yo, he fucking busted out the classics! Made it just for the trip. I think you'll like it. I pop the CD into the car stereo, and it's like I'm immediately transported to our old dorm room. Hit after hit plays, and soon enough we're both happily scream, scream singing the lyrics to each song as we fly down the highway. This song was Carl's favorite. Carl, the third roommate. You brought that dog home one night, and I couldn't pry you two apart. So we spent an entire semester fabricating a story about our fort- Yeah, we read this dialogue. Then we had room inspection. That Ori was so suspicious of us, but could never prove anything. And Carl was just under a blanket. Bless that pup's courage under fire. Man, we did some dumb things back in college. The hours fly by as we belt out tunes in whatever non-existent key our voice registers in. Soon enough, we're surrounded by lush trees and spectacular vistas of everything amazing that nature has to offer. We're very clearly still in like a downtown section. Real good. We park our car at a familiar entrance to a familiar trail. Guys, is it just me or do these woods look somewhat familiar? Give me one second, I got an audio balance.
You park your car at the entrance. I'm thankful I've been working out. Otherwise, I'd be dreading all the hiking. Craig looks intently at his phone. Everything all right? I don't know. Yep, just had to fire off one last work email. Craig pockets his phone and we start on the trail. It's easy, but I know I would have been huffing and puffing at this point if it weren't for all the murder sprints. I look around me and take in the tall trees and animal chirps. Everything okay back there? Oh. There's no reception out here. Oh yeah, being out in the middle of nowhere will do that. I recognize the look of anxiety on Craig's mm -hmm. face. But what if there's a problem? You've trained for this? There won't be? Look, Craig, we all know that if you really wanted, you could flex your calf muscles and fly out of here like a rocket ship all the way back to Maple Bay. You're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. This is our weekend. Nice. We keep marching down the trail, but it seems like Craig is still worried. After a bit, he stops on his tracks. Maybe we should go back. We could go find another campground that gets good cell phone extraction. Craig, seriously, what's wrong? I mean, I'm just really nervous. My dad instinct is kicking in. My mind keeps conjuring all sorts of worst-case scenarios. What is something happens to the girls. I don't have signal. I would have no way of knowing. Let me tell you, that feeling never goes away, no matter how old your kids are. You just gotta remind yourself that they're in good hands. Craig doesn't say anything. I give him a reassuring punch in the shoulder. Try to remember why we came out here. The plan was to get away from it all and just focus us on ourselves for the trip. No distractions. No cell phones. Just dudes being dudes. Craig looks at me directly in the eyes. No distractions. No cell phone service. Just two dads relaxing out in the woods. We're gonna have some fun this weekend. Craig and I get back to marching. It's not too long of a hike before we get to the camp, the campsite, and we're both glad to see that we're the only people there. I can't believe you still have this tent. Found it in my attic and already checked it for holes. It's seen better days, sure, but I think we'll be able to survive. Dude, I've been stretching my vocal cords. I dumped the bag of fabric and poles onto the ground. We unfold the tent in the desired spot, I hand Craig the snakes. We still know how to do this, right? Of course we do. We do not. <laughs> After 20 minutes of struggling like people in a bad infomercial, we somehow managed to build an upright structure that closely resembles what a tent would look like if you asked somebody to draw a picture of one of with their eyes shut. Background noise is very loud. I thought I turned it down already, my bad. Let me know if that's good. I wouldn't put this up against the storm, but I think we'll be able to survive for the night. We set out a couple chairs and cooking equipment and miring our handiwork. Hey. Bro, look at us go. Look upon the kingdom we have built. Upon this we rock we shall grill our meats and drink our brews. I'm still wearing the burger shirt, by the way. For we hold dominion over this land. Verily, and uh, look at our camping chairs, which we are going to sit on. So what's next on the Cap Strand begins a dog it? All right, I I, I don't want to be a, uh, I don't want to have to pee mid love confession, so I'm gonna use the bathroom. I'll be fast, I promise. Y'all like ambient cricket noises? <sighs> now that we have shelter, I think it's time for us to do some exploring. There's a waterfall? Holy fuck, it's like a piece of fan fiction. Let's get hiking. Craig and I venture in the woods. We amble along, taking our time to chat and admire wildlife. 
Craig reaches out an arm and stops me. Dude, does that look like what I think it looks like? I look over where he's pointing. Oh my god, it does. That tree looks like a butt. <laughs> what? Why have most of you not listened to Pest? You guys hurt my fucking- y'all fucking hurt me. That hurts my feelings, guys. After this stream- after this, I'm gonna play Pest on stream so that it should be 100% yes on the poll. I can't get over how detailed it is. I examined the butt tree further. The contour is perfect. It even has back dimples. I thought we were gonna have a great time camping, but this makes it even better. Craig holds, holds back a snicker. I aspire to have every hike be as good as this one. I'm snickering now, too. Let us analyze this tree further. Okay, that's a bit vulgar. Craig and I share a huge belly laugh at our awful jokes. The best thing about this is that there's no daughters here to tell us our jokes are bad. We high five. Yeah, fuck those stupid little kids. I fucking regret being a father. Holy shit. Craig and I hit the trail again. It's been a long time since we've been out here. But everything seems more or less familiar. We point out old landmarks that we remember back from our college days. I think we're getting there now. Hmm. Hmm. Check it out. There's a clearing up ahead. As we get closer, I can hear water running. Holy fuck. And this, the central music starts playing. Cresting over a hill. Craig and I are greeted by a wide clearing surrounded by trees. In front of us is a beautiful waterfall spilled into a large body of water that runs into a river. Mouths agape with the genuine beauty of the place we go to investigate. The old waterfall. Nice. It's gorgeous. Nature is so rad. Peering further, we get an idea of how deep the pool is. Hmm. Think we could jump off it like the old days? Ha! This old dad is happy here on dry land. Mm -hmm. Looks like you could climb right up over there. We didn't even bring swimming trunks. What are you talking about? Craig immediately begins taking his clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking goblin, goblin mode, goblin mode. Stop reading it like that. It was intended to be read, read like this, dog. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, I was not ready. It was very fucking sudden. Anyways. Look at Craig's butt. Don't look at Craig's butt. <laughs> he got that schmeat on him. God damn. God damn. Bark, 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 growl, bark, snarl. <laughs> Only- Oh no, he's hot. Oh no. It's like the Squidward meme. It, do I look at Craig's butt or do I respect him and not look at his butt? I don't know. What kind of what kind of eye motions are we doing today? Thanks for the 50 bits switchblade. Me having the gay masculine urge to look at Craig's butt. I will I will do a little bit of respectful ogling. I can't help but sneak a peek. That that is a good butt. Craig turns around suddenly. He catches me looking. Oh. I do a lot of glute workouts. I immediately <laughs> The eggplants, dude. I immediately turn away, blushing. Mm. You coming or what? Oh, uh, I don't know about this dude. He's already making his way over to the waterfall by the time I finish my sentence. When I re when he realizes I'm not right behind him, he turns around and rolls his eyes. <laughs> we lived together for years, and I've seen your ass more times than I can count. It's no big deal. You got it, chief. I take my shirt off and drop it in a pile with Craig's clothes. I put the rest of my clothes on the ground, feeling exposed. Craig and I climb up to the top of the waterfall, making sure not to slip on any wet rocks. He reaches the peak before I do and offers me a hand getting up. At the top, we look over the cliff and into the tiny lake. It seems so much higher up from this perspective. Craig has always been a daredevil. He pulled some stunts in college that I'm honestly still shocked he survived. I was always the one standing on the sidelines, watching and hoping I wouldn't be bringing him home in a gurney. Man, this could be dangerous. Craig looks me in the eyes. Nice. Don't think, just jump. Craig cannonballs off the waterfall and into the lake, creating a huge splash. I'm worried for a moment before he finally resurfaces from under the water. <laughs> Woo. He treads water and looks up at me. You coming or what? Don't think, just jump. How are you supposed to just not think? I'm pretty sure that's not physically possible. My toes grip the edge of the rock. 
The water looks so far away. Don't think, just... I run off the edge, trying to do my best cannonball. Somewhere in the middle, it turns into a really grateful belly flop. Thanks for the 300 bits, Natsu uh, Arikuru. You guys, you guys have seen me, like, jump off cliffs. You know I have good technique, alright? Like, you, you know I'd crush that shit. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I hit the water with a loud slap. I resurface to find Craig giggling. My ribs are broken, asshole. I rate that belly flop a solid 8 out of 10. Your form was lacking, but your heart was in the right place. I playfully splash water at Craig. Are you sure about that? I splash him again. You've given me no choice. Craig splashes me in the face with a huge splash of water. You've awakened the beast. He launches another wave of water at me. Don't you put me in a corner here. Don't put a wild animal in the corner. Squirt water at him with your hands? Ooh, fuck. This is an important choice, I think. I think... You, I think it's time we get physical. I think we gotta get physical. I lunge for Craig and manage to get him in an arm lock. Time for the finishing move. I summon all my dad's strength to lift Craig out the water. Hey! And I drop him down for the splash. Craig bounces, bounces back out the water. My turn. Oh no. It seems like Craig was simply allowing me to pick him up and dunk him. He grapples me with his clearly superior muscles, and quite literally, tosses me across the water. I emerge from the water devastated. You think I did all those pull-ups just so I could look good with my shirt off? Nah, bro. These arm cannons are dad launchers. <laughs> Every- the animation's so fucking funny. Like, just like the rotating penises coming out from behind him. Craig does a playful flex for me. Damn. Craig. Truce. Please. Craig thinks about it. Oh. Yeah, sure. We shake hands. There is peace. Man, that jump was such an adrenaline rush. Not so scary now, huh? I'll race you to the top. Fuck. Wait. Enough excitement would, like, imply going back. A wooga, a wooga, a wooga. I'm racing. We run all the way to the top of the slip rocks and cannonball off the water ball again. Waterfall again. What a rush. Good form on that one. Want to go again? You know it? It, we, we gotta go again, don't we? With the same energy we had in our youth, we climb back up to the top of the waterfall. I'm brave enough to try a flip, which I'm sure looks incredibly graceful as I belly flop into the water. Phew, man. This is fun. Got one more on you? I live for danger. It takes us a little more time, but we get to the waterfall and both do our best running jumps into the water below. Alright, I think that's my limit. We should get going back before it gets too dark. Mm. Fuck. I, I don't want to push my luck on this one. I don't, it, like, is pushing my luck dangerous? Do I have to know when to call it quits? Agree with him? Only one more or you'll actually die? You're right, agree. Yeah, I'm gonna play it safe. Hmm. We should probably head back. We go to put our clothes back on and notice that they're soaking wet. Maybe a splash fight wasn't the best idea. Ah, it's okay. We'll get a fire going in no time. We can dry off and get some dinner going. Sopping wet. <laughs> Sopping wet. Mm. We hike back to the camp and unpack everything we need for dinner. Craig pulls out a couple of, of steaks and some chopped potatoes and tin foil. Nice. You're ready for a feast? Hey man, take a seat. The Craig train is pulling into the relaxation station, and I'm your conductor. Let me cook for you. Absolutely not. Cooking is the thing that relaxes me most. Craig cooks now? I remember how his entire sophomore year diet consisted of microwavable mac and cheese, but not microwaved and have trouble believing the thing he just said. At least let me start the fire. Sure, just grab my matches. Craig reaches into his backpack. He rummages around in his bag, pulling things out and checking every pocket. Uh-oh. I... I know I packed it. Craig checks another bag and still can't find it. My stomach grumbles and now I'm more acutely aware of how cold and wet I am. We really need to get a fire started. Or, uh, we need to conserve body heat. Okay, well, it's not the end of the world. Gosh, I'm so stupid. I could have sworn I packed it. I'm sorry, dude. Don't be. We can figure this out. 
We can start a f we can start a fire. We're smart guys. I mean, how hard could it be? I've watched plenty of survival programs on TV. We'll need some wood. I gesture to the trees around us. There's no shortage of that. Hey, just punch it. And some tinder. Mm -hmm. We can make that work. And then I think some ancient alien are then supposed to come by and give us advanced technology or renovate our house. Depends on the show. Craig and I gather some wood. Hmm. Just add fire, right? That's the fun part. The sun is just now setting and a cool breeze rustles through the leaves of the trees around us. We have to work nice. quick. I've done this in the past and I know I can figure it out. Just give me a second. Any way I can help? Uh -huh. Give me some moral support. Lift my spirits and we'll make this fire happen. Never knew a better Craig. Fuck. What if I go overboard with it? I feel like that like might make him uncomfortable or distract him. I'm trying I'm trying to play this smart. Don't go overboard. Never knew a better Craig. Don't go overboard. Yeah, I'm not feeling overboard. Better Craig. I'm thinking better Craig. Better Craig, yeah. In all my days, I can confidently say that I've never known a Craig to be a better friend, father, or fire maker. Oh, that did it. Aw. Actually, now that I think about it, I knew a guy named Craig in high school who ended up getting a job as a professional pyrotechnics operator, and I suppose he must have been pretty good at starting fire, but... I bet you're even better than that guy. Oh. Why the fuck would... Why? That was not in the prompt. That was not in the prompt. That was not in the fucking prompt. Fucking shafted on that one. God damn it. Eventually, Craig is miraculously able to get something he going. He blows on the embers and gently places the glowing moss. I def like I definitely did not I definitely did not choose to say that shit. How many minutes can we go back in time? Yeah, we we're we're, we're we're running this back. We're running this back. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, right, I can just fast forward. You're really giving that fire the business. You're an amazing, hard-working father with a steady work ethic and everyone loves you. Your daughters think you're a superhero and the neighborhood dads respect you immensely. Also, your butt looks great. Woo! That did it. Bro, stop, you'll make me cry. Okay, okay, don't want your tears putting out the fire. Eventually, Craig is miraculously able to get something going. He blows on the embers and gently places the glowing moss into the base of the pit. Soon enough, we have a nice little fire going. Way to go, man. We're regular old outdoorsy fellas. Oh. Hooray for not dying. I take a seat in one of the lawn chairs Craig bought and cozy up to the fire, warming up my hands. Relax, man. Take it easy. Let me handle the dinner. I watch as Craig strokes, stokes the fire and sets up a makeshift grill for the steaks. After all that hiking and swimming and fire starting, I'm able to relax a bit. With the sound of crickets and the scent of steak filling the air, I actually feel pretty calm. Craig expertly sears stew two steaks in a pan he's been heating up on the fire. Strokes? You didn't hear shit. Cracking thyme and crushed ginger even over it while basting them both in butter. Wow, I didn't know he was actually good at cooking. The fanciest I ever saw him get in college was when he started sprinkling the seasoning packet into dry ramen and eating it straight up. When did this happen? You used to eat cereal every morning with beer instead of milk. Oh. I grew up, I guess. I think these are just about ready. Craig puts steaks onto a paper plate and sets them aside. I start to reach for one. Craig smacks my hand mm. away. Dude, let them rest. It'll be more flavorful that way. I patiently return to my seat, eyeing on the steaks longingly from a distance. They smell incredible. He prepares a side salad, sprinkling feta cheese on the freshly chopped greens. He places it next to a generous pile of roasted potatoes covered in olive oil and rosemary. Once, it all, once it's all ready, we sit down by the fire and dig in. Hmm. Everything tastes okay? I'm in heaven. Oh. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> oh, fuck, this is so homosexual. This is, get, like, this is even worse than like the soft mod video, dude. Somebody said back arching. Jesus fucking Christ. You people are un... un like, I can't tell you in public. 
Remember how far an entire semester we would eat burritos for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Mm -hmm. It's not- it's so hard to not go back to that. Look at you now, man. You have kids. A great job. And now you cook like a vengeful wizard whose arch nemesis is microwavable food. I'm really impressed with how much you've gotten your life together. <laughs> Craig laughs, but there's no humor in it. Mm. I'm glad you think that. I glance at Craig while he picks at his salad. He really grew out of his baby face, but there's something about his expression that makes him seem so much older than he is. A sense of maturity he didn't have in college. He looks exhausted. You okay? I don't know. Yeah. Come on, dude. I've known you for long enough to see when you're down. Oh, man. Guys, this is it. This is it. it I'm already out of water, and like, I, I want to give my full performance for these last few lines at the ending, so I'm going to get some more. Sorry that I keep leaving, guys. I should really just keep like a few up here with me. Mm. <coughs> How can you just leave? Uh, cause I'm thirsty. I'm tired, bro. I think being out here is making me realize just how drained I feel. You work really hard, Craig. It can't be easy. Oh. I have to, for my girls. I volunteer at their school, I cook healthy meals for them, I do everything I can to make sure they're safe and happy. And when they're with their mom, I'm always working overtime so I can support them. And then you work out a lot so you can crush anyone who stands in their way? Oh. That, and I don't want to fall into my old habits. I need to set a good example for my girls. Everything I do is for them, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But it seems like it's bleeding you dry. Nice. If that's what it takes to raise them well, then it's worth it. Craig, buddy, I know where you're coming from here, but you gotta take care of yourself, too. Bro! I do, though. I eat right and exercise, and that's not what I mean. You're too little butter on too much toast, you know? Bro! What? <laughs> Just the fucking screaming bro. You're spreading yourself too thin. Life needs balance. It's great that you care this much about your kids, but you can't neglect your own needs because you're too busy taking care of everyone else's. You matter too. I don't know. It just... I know I can provide for my family, and if I take a step back and look at everything objectively, I know I'm doing right by them. Oh. But I can't explain it, man. There's always that voice in the back of my head telling me that I need to do more. It's like it's never enough for me. Every time I try to relax, that voice keeps telling me I don't deserve it. To be honest, I even feel guilty about being out here. Craig, you're trying your best and you're doing an amazing job. That's a fact. But even if you weren't, you would still deserve happiness. Oh, man. Do I, though? Oh, man. Fucking Christ, dude. Hell yeah, bro. It, bro, feels like... Would that be friend zoning him? This feel- the distinction feels important. The distinction feels important. The distinction feels important. No bro. Don't bro him. I- I- no bro, no bro, no bro. The darkest pit of hell has opened to swallow you whole. Yeah, fucking FNAF ending. Bro is for lovers? Bro is for lovers? Well, I mean, like, I've used the word bro homosexually before, so I don't know. I haven't played this rap in a while, I'll admit. I need to do this right. I need to do this right. I can't fuck this up. Save it so we can do both? You're right. I'm a try, bro. Oh! <laughs> I guess it was gay! I look at Craig and think about what a good friend and even better father he is. He's compassionate. He's hardworking. He's relentlessly positive. He encourages everyone to be the best version of themselves. He makes me want to be a better person. If you could only see yourself the way I see you. Oh. Craig beams. He gets up and walks over to his supplies. Hmm. Come on. I bought dessert. Oh, are you going to use the campfire to torch the tops of some creme brulee? Oh. What? I know little to nothing about cooking. Craig pulls out marshmallows. Well, you still know how to make s'mores, right? Bro, in a gay way. 
I think the more important question is, do you know how to make s'mores? As I recall, you used to just completely blacken the marshmallows. Mm. Oh, I stand by that. It's charred on the outside, but the gooey center is preserved. That's actually pretty based. Like, see, like, blackened marshmallows are goaded. Brutish. This is how I know the player character is not me. Craig throws a marshmallow at me, and I catch it in my mm. mouth. Pro move. We used to be able to do that at a great distance against a wind disadvantage. Give me a week of practice and I'll be competitive again. Bro, in parentheses, homo- or in- yeah, parentheses, homoerotic intent. Craig and I sit in the warm glow of the campfire, watching embers float up towards the sky. The stars are so much brighter out here. Yeah, hmm. I miss this quite. Me too. We stay here until it gets late, half remembering stories from college. We watch as the fire dies and eventually clamber into the tent. And then we fuck! We crawl into the tent and I unfurl my sleeping bag. Wait, where's the other sleeping bag? I look around for a second. Oh. Oh no. I must have left it at home. It's all yours, dude. I'm sorry. I'll just curl up over here. No way. Here. Craig unzips the sleeping bag and spreads it out so there's enough room for both of us to lay on top of it. One bed trope? <laughs> Oh my fucking god! Night, bro. Good night, bro. I roll over and we face away from each other, without a blanket. It's really cold. I shiver. Without realizing it, I find myself nestling closer to Craig. I'm sure he won't mind. He turns over and I can feel his breath on my neck. It's hard to focus on anything else. Gay, gay, homosexual, gay, 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 homosexual, gay. I turn over, trying to get more comfortable. I open my eyes to find Craig's face only a few inches from my own. For once, he looks at peace. His eyes flutter open. He hit- His hand finds a place on my waist. I'm not sure who leans in first, but suddenly, we're kissing. We look at each other again, my heart racing. Craig. Oh. I got strong feelings for you, bro. Feelings I can't deny anymore. Bro. Me too. I run my hands through his hair, then down to his chest. Craig brings me closer, wrapping his arms around me. I feel so... secure. Oh. You know, talking about old times is fun, but... Mm. I like making new memories with you. I smile, tracing the lines of his hip with my finger. We kiss again. I'm not worried about us getting too cold tonight. Dub. Dub, boys. Dub. Date complete. I think I crushed that. I think I crushed that. S rank, let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! Holy shit. Cleared it. First try. First try. Didn't even have to use the saves. Did, wait, no, I think I did have to use the saves for the, um... For the, uh, overboard compliments. Woo! I think I have final- everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay, gotta act natural. Be cool, quite. Be cool. Amanda walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Off to a good start? Something fishy? Rats. You ask too many questions. Sorry, sweetie. It's the feds. That life of crime is finally catching up to you. I tried to send him in a different direction, but even I'm no match for the power and funding of the U.S. government. Yeah. Well, if they think they're gonna take me alive, they got another thing coming. I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for you. <gasps> Yeah, I can tell. You're very bad at lying. Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? <laughs> Father, it would fill my heart with glee. I lead Amanda over to the kitchen table where a present lies covered under a tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school last week. I know you told me not to make a big deal about it. <laughs> but, aw, oh, Dad, you... I dramatically whip the cloth off the table. Amanda's jaw drops. No way. I figure you probably won't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it might be a bit nice to take a piece of home with you. A DVD box set of Long Haul Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers. This is all 19 seasons. And bonus material, including commentary with actual ghosts featured on the show. <laughs> Dad, I love this. Thank you. She gives me a big hug. I'm glad you like it. Hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pigskin or something? Totally. I follow Amanda to the back door. <laughs> 
You told me not to make a deal, big deal, but you seem to have forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments. So consider this your graduation party. Surprise! Dad, everyone's here. Oh yeah, everyone wanted to come and support you. Yes. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Sure is. Fully customizable, down to the type of mac. And there's an ice cream cake, that good, the good kind with the crunchies in the middle. Yes. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just go have fun with your pals, all right? I'm so proud of you, Amanda. Amanda smiles and runs to her friends. I should make the rounds and make sure everyone's having a good time. But first, mac and cheese. Quiet. Ryan, you made it. Hey. Huh, I don't pass up on good mac. What do you think of the party? <laughs> It's not that bad. Just not bad? Yeah. yeah, it's not bad. Don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Daisy trots up. Hi, Amanda's dad. Hey, Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? This is a really great party. Thank you so much for inviting us. You're very welcome, tiny child who knows how to pay a compliment. Brian and I lock eyes. This isn't over. Looks like you've settled into the neighborhood quite nicely. Yep, couldn't ask for a better cul-de-sac. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Hopefully we'll see you at more church events. We got a big schedule plan for the rest of the year. Sure thing, Joseph. And maybe if you aren't doing anything later, we could hang out sometime? Sure, Joseph. That'd be great. Well, see you later. Hugo comes up to me with a plate of mac and cheese. Hey! The perfect cheddar to mac ratio. Beautiful work, quite. Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda going to her dream school. I'm glad she turned it around for finals. Me too. That school, sh that scholarship money will really help. <laughs> she just fucking like sped by, dude. Amanda walks by and pretends to not see Hugo. I wouldn't call that walking. Amanda, come say hi to your old teacher. Hey, congratulations on graduating. I know you're going to do great things at art school. Thank you. Uh -huh, yeah, thanks. Amanda starts to back away. Wait, I just realized that you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You no longer hold power over me. Ah. You're right. Go forth, adult. I can no longer give you detention. Yeah, I'm gonna break anything I want, and there's nothing you can do about it. Are you still mad about the time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? Nope. Ah. And I'll have you know that the globe didn't even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place, so... She'll fit in college just fine. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Robert gestures vaguely to the snack table. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. <laughs> yep, he's emotionally constipated, but he's doing his best. See you later. Hey. Matt! Let me know when Amanda leaves for college. I'll have a fresh batch of banana bread Kennedys ready for her. Thank you. I know she'll love that. Uh. What a splendid garden party. My deepest thanks for extending an invitation to my son and I. The icebox cake is divine. Yeah, thanks, dude. Good cake. Thanks for coming by. It looks like Amanda's hanging out with Briar and Hazel. Let's see what they're up to. Okay, Briar, think of a shape. Hazel? What's she thinking? Square. Briar? Star. L. We'll get it next time. Amanda leans in close to Briar and Hazel, lowering her voice. Listen, you guys can be real with me. You're downplaying your psychic abilities. I want you to know that you can trust me. Hell, even think of me as the third twin. Amanda, that's a triplet. You know, Dad, by the time I'm done with these kids, we're going to be finishing each other's... What? You didn't finish your sentence. What are we going to be finishing? Each other's... Sentences! See? Third twin. I have to go. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat next to Craig. The sun is setting and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Oh. Bro. Bro! Hmm. This reminds me of the parties we used to throw. Fewer keg stands, of course. Probably for the best. I don't want to get my hip replaced after a party trick goes wrong. Oh. We can leave keg stands in the past. Oh. Craig sighs. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. I'm alright. I just can't hang for too long. I gotta get back home and answer some emails. What happened to relaxing? I am relaxing. Right now. We're sitting on a bench. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I could be standing. <laughs> best. Hmm. See? Relaxing. Craig, you gotta take better care of yourself. I care about you and I want you to be okay. Mm. I appreciate it, but I'm fine. You're a good friend, dude. Yeah, I know. Aw, oh, goddammit. 
a good friend? Do you, you ever wish that maybe we were more than that? Hmm. Oh, bro. Oh. I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry if I gave off that impression. It's because I fucked the middle date, I think. I don't know. To be honest, I kind of wondered the same thing, but hmm. I don't have time for that right now. I think we're just better off as friends. God fucking damn it. Oh. Yeah, I can do friends. Craig hops up. Oh. Alright, buddy. <sighs> he called me buddy. <sighs> this is the worst day of my fucking life. This is the worst day of my fucking life. Yeah, all right, whatever. Just get out of my fucking backyard. Let's hang soon. Yep, that would be nice. Craig jogs out of the yard. Man. The last guests begin to make their way out of the party. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party, Pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So, I, uh, I also have something for you. For me? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but... Growing up wasn't easy, but it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Dad, you've been there for me through everything. There's, There's been times in my life when you were my only friend. Mm. I was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you, but I realized that everything you've done for me has been to prepare me for this, and I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Don't cry. Don't cry. I swear to God, quite, if you cry again. You're the best, Dad. I love you. And I'm crying. Anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. <laughs> Present time. Amanda hands me a tiny wrapped package. You really did fumble the bag. Yeah. I, I got an A on the first one and an S on the second one. It You know, that's a really accurate reflection of how, like, grading averages go, though. Like, the majority of my things were, like, fucking top tier. And then I get, like, one... I do, like, one mid-tier thing and it, like, tanks your grade to, like, a 50. It's a fail. Jeez. A framed picture of me and Amanda. It's us. Kind of shocking. All of our photo albums are just pictures of me, huh? I figured we needed at least one together before I leave. Amanda, thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. You're such a talented, intelligent young woman, and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock him dead, kid. Always do. Amanda and I share a hug. This is only the beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Dad. Okay, I'm gonna break so much stuff, intentionally and unintentionally. You're probably gonna have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. Amanda and I wave bye to the partygoers as they leave. We sit together and watch the sun slowly dip below the horizon. At least I didn't fuck up, you know, the, the dad part of the dream daddy thing. I'm glad you made some friends. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's maybe not what you were looking for, but these people care about you. I love you, Dad. We'll always have each other. You're right. It's gonna be hard at first, but this is the next chapter in our story. And I'd be nervous about it, but I know that you're always gonna be looking out for me the same way I'll always be looking out for you. Hmm. Team quote? Team quote. Well, it stings, but that was certainly bomb on the wound. <laughs> Fuck. That could have gone worse. Could have gone worse. A redo is needed, dude. My my throat is raw. I've been bro zoned. Oh wait, here's the fucking here's the fucking pick. Look, it's me. In significantly lower quality than my daughter. Ah. Oh. Pain. 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 Do it again. Maybe at some point down the line we will. Maybe at some point down the line. Fuck, that shit stings. That shit stings! Oh.
At least they'll always have Springtrap, right guys? Right guys? Oh, good grief. All right, that, that, that stream went on for a, a pretty long while. Uh, I was initially, I was going to do a react segment after I finished Dream Daddy, but this went on a long time. And uh, my throat is a, little, is a little sore from all the text reading, but I had a lot of fun. So thank you guys for coming out to this video or this stream. It was a lot of fun. If you're watching on YouTube, you missed out, especially because I announced this one was happening. So I stream on twitch.tv slash quite on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Oh my God, that's crazy. And guys, before we go, I, I, saw, I saw the thing where you guys said that like 60% of you haven't heard Pest, so I'm making you listen to it before we leave, before we do ad break and close out the stream. Yeah, like, there no excuses past this, alright guys? No, no excuses. Call me King Kong, I got a fist in every orifice. Need a bitch to step on me like I'm playing Origins. Eating too much, I got a shit while recording this. I don't smoke weed, just spices, and it sorta hits. Saving my virginity won't catch me in a horror bitch. I'ma stay chest, last to smash like Sora is. Pocket pussy got my penis redder than Corbin. His tip inside my mouth sucked the dick like I'm snorkeling. He blowing out my back, it's getting cracked like some porcelain. Even gay sex is still heteronormative. If I take a block or a video, then dip like an enderman. Say quite stole that title, like no shit, of course he did. Yeah, my drink purple. Not lean, no, is G fuel. Biggest call me slurs that there's a nice ring to. I give advice that fucks up your My life like Bing Dude. Try to eat a rock and now I got me a chip too. Stacking up the mid rolls, I'm forcing you to sit through. I'm the last choice to post up with like bitch shoot. Sad cause the world's gonna die, that's a big mood. We don't have a future, that's the reason that I sip booze. Instrumental sound like low five beats to cramp to. I'll be in your scalp on your head like some shampoo. A few old friends more two faced than Rambo. If you got a pick crew avatar, I can't stand you. Ugh. I honestly, most of everything I said is all bullshit. I'm begging, like, literally on my knees, all doughy eyed. Please don't take this that serious. I mean, I'm feeling delirious. Can't control myself, got hit with the imperious. Don't touch your balls at least the first time you're hearing this. One well, my Twitch chatters killed a cat and then buried it. Banging on the same mattress that I keep my money in. A Mr. Krabs mobile don't give my employees benefits. All my podcasts have ended like most marriages. I fuck dudes and get stoned, I'm out the Old Testament. Stacking money on the top like a Sega Genesis. I've been getting fucked up worse than eugenics is. I talk shit more than a 4chan degenerate. Hard to cancel me like a Planet Fitness membership. I think my channel's dead and I think that they're all pessimists. The careers lasted longer than those fuck ass confederates masked up and big headed same as darth tenebris my dick funky looking shape kind of like a pencil is a lot of folks on tiktok who can it with oedipus i tweet a lot of dumb shit just for the hell of it enough good people around me so i'm not afraid of severance i'll burst the line to end it all call the hoodie pestilence stream pest stream pest also i lied when i said that was the last thing uh this is for everybody who stuck around to the end i i, I lie i said that there was going to be a snippet of like the new song but I didn't have time to get it done. I was a liar. Most of what I do, I don't really think it's planned. Got some trash taste like YouTubers and Japan do. That's all you get. Fuck you. All right. Ad break time. Who's live right now? Is anybody else playing Dream Daddy? That'd be a fun raid. Another VTuber is. Good gag. Joko and Weast are both live. Uh, I'm trying to find, like, somebody that, like, if I were to rage, you guys would, like, stick around easy enough because of, like, whatever game they're playing. Joko's probably the easiest, though, because I know, like, we have, like, adjacent audiences. Kenji? I don't know who that is. Like, fucking I Nabber? I Nabber Dog? Nabber Dog? I Nabber Dog? I never dog. Yeah, gee, I never dog. All right, I'm going to raid Joko. I'm going to give him a big one. Thanks to everybody who's here for the first time on YouTube. I stream on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. Hope to see you all again. This is like probably my biggest stream I've got. I've done without a raid, so, and it's been a lot of fun. I will see you guys on Wednesday. I expect to see every single one of you in this chat raiding Joko, saying hi, being like, what's up, my guy? How's it hanging? What's cracking? Every single one of you, get in here, get in here. I'm only seeing like 200, it should be like 700. The fuck, what is that fraction? What is that ratio?
Do better. Do better. Do better. I want every single one of you fucks in here. Or not. We can just rate them as is. We got a limited amount of time, so it, it's just going to do it on its own. I'll, I'll just let it ride and however many are in there are in there. Join now or I'll beat you up for real? For real. He's playing FNAF Security Breach. You guys hound my dick to play that game all the time, so you should be very happy about this. All right, yeah, whatever. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. What the fuck are these noises? Fight Raid! Oh my god! Hi everybody!